shutout as UCF defeated DePaul 2-0. But now they face the Gators. And of course, Shannon Doherty is the leader for the Knights offensively. As Eric Lopez here privileged to be joined by three-time All-American Francesca Ness. Shannon Doherty is a big part of this game. Yeah, you can't talk enough about Shannon Doherty. Just that player who's able to come up every time and produce those big type of hits. She is that player who just knows how to have those type of clutch hits and just able to put the pressure on her back and act like it's just another game. So they're going to rely on her heavily going up against the Gators offense, going up against Gator pitching, because she's that veteran status. She's faced them before. She's beat them before. She's had big time hits against them as well. She's, she's owned Florida. Of course, the Gators are coming off a of victory over James Madison. They just ended a short while ago. And they were led by their senior, Hannah Adams. Yeah, Hannah Adams, you'll know her name. She was their superstar for the Gators last year, coming up with some really big time hits. But this year started off a little bit slower, more singles. But in the game today against JMU, she got her first home run of the season and then had another one right after it. So back to back home runs for Adams. But really throughout this entire lineup, you're going to see a lot of dynamics. You have lots of speed, tons of power, but players who are very tough to get out. UCF's defense is going to have to be sharp tonight. Certainly it's going to be a big key. And of course, getting the ball for the Knights, making her debut in this Florida UCF rivalry is Kama Woodall. Yeah, Woodall, I love the call to start her. Kama has not faced Florida before. Florida has not faced her. So this is going to be a brand new pitcher that Gators are going up against. They're going to see predominantly a drop ball out of Woodall. She has that heavy type of drop that she can off speed with that changeup. So Someone who I love the most on this squad in this pitching circle is Woodall because of that competitive level that she brings. So she's ready for this game. And I'm going to say this is probably the biggest game that she's pitched in so far. Of course, there's the Knights defense behind her. Of course, Michaela Macario has been making headlines defensively and with her bat. Yeah, I love that freshman shortstop right there. She makes some ballsy plays out there. She does not play like a freshman. True. So we're set to go in a sold out crowd here at the complex as the first pitch. It's low for a ball one. Glad you could join us wherever you are on ESPN+. Plus. It's the first time ever that Florida has played in a UCF tournament. In fact, it's the first time they've played on this field on a Sunday. They usually play on a Wednesday. It's the 1-0. It's a strike. It's 1-1, one and, one, and it has been packed for hours. And while it's the date says February 27th, it feels like a regional final, something these two programs are used to playing against each other in a regional Sunday. It has that feel to it, doesn't it? Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, everyone is excited for this matchup, especially after 2021. With UCF taking in twice the series when they met against one another. So it's always a big rival when they meet, especially here in Orlando. One ball, two strikes, the count. Of course, Florida just came off finishing off James Madison. Had to hold on there for a 6-4 to four victory while UCF hasn't played since yesterday, which is very fascinating dynamics into this matchup. As Kendra Falby at the plate takes low for a ball, 2-2 two and two the count. Of course, Falby has been unbelievable, hitting 5-10 on the year, one homer and eight RBIs. Already has 15 steals this year and might be going down as the fastest Gator ever with her speed. A sensational freshman as the 2-2 is lying foul to third base. We're going to check out where you see UCF's defense playing her more like a slapper. And of course, when you see that type of a staggering batting average at 5'10", you would assume top of the lineup that she is that prototypical slapper. Just put it down and use your speed. But she has a power slap with her as well. So center fielder Rowe is going to have to be on her, on her heels ready in case there's going to be a hit up the middle because Falby can deliver that easily. 2-2 two -two pitch from Woodall. It's fouled off. Falby was the ninth rated player, an extra inning softball in that 2021 class, was part of the Canadian bronze medal team in the 2019 under 19 the world championships. And people talking within the program saying they just keep talking, marveling how fast she is. That's the 2 2. And that's Miss Lowe, ball three. And it's part of this Florida offense, which is off to a red-hot start, but doing it differently than maybe in years past. They used to have all this power across the lineup, but Tim Walton now has a lot of speed now that depends on their offense to put pressure on the defense. And yeah, when you when someone says like, oh yeah, Kendra Falby's fast, you have to see just how fast she is in person. 
Well, you get to find out as you just draw a walk. So a walk to Falby to start here. And she's on first base with Hannah Adams coming to the plate. And that's something you always have to be careful when you're going up against Florida. They do not swing outside of their zone. They know where they're honing in on. They do not chase very often. So when you go up against this potent lineup as a pitcher, you think, okay, I have to stretch it. I got to get them to chase. But they don't like to chase. You have to challenge them. Now Adams, 458 on the year, two homers, 12 RBIs for the All-American. Pitch ball one, outside, 1-0 oh, the count. She hit two homers in that JMU win. But I want you to talk about that. Florida just played. The game ended about 20, 30 minutes ago while UCF's been sitting watching. How much of a factor is that you think will be in this game? Yeah, I feel like the edge typically goes for the team that just finished playing up because they're bringing that momentum going. But UCF has been ready for this matchup. There goes the runner, the throw to second is safe as Kendra Falby has her 16th steal of the year. She is off to a torrid start and she gets the steal. You know, really not a surprise here that you see Falby in motion so soon, just I think getting her foot underneath there. We talk about that speed that she has and she's going up against Ashley Griffin who's only one for 10 of catching runners on steals. Florida is so dependent on their speed this year. They're 41 out of 45 through the first 15 games this year. It's the most stolen bases any Gator team's had through the first 15 games. As the count is two and one. But that's kind of a difference, a different looking Florida offense, Francesca. They're attacking more on the base pass with speed than just depending on the power. There's the two one. It's missed three and one. It's kind of evolved this offense, hasn't it, over the years? It definitely has. I mean, the old Florida back in the day was prototypical, all power, all home runs. They led the SEC, led the nation in home runs. But then as Coach Tim Walton started getting more years under his belt, he started realizing he needs speed, he needs a strong defense, and he's really emerged as a strong defensive team and the speed this season. Count is full to Adams. Three and two the count, and Falby is a big part of that. Florida has stolen, as a team, has stolen four bases or more in six straight games. The school record is 129. Florida did that in 2007. As the payoff pitch is a grounder to short. Mercario is there, will throw to first in time. Falby takes off for third and is in there. And there's the example of that speed that Kendra Falby has and brings to the table. And that's a feeling uh, from a defense is that when you see that speed around you, when you see someone who's just going station to station on their own, it puts pressure on you. You have to be clean, just like Macario does for that easy six to three play. But you can never take a breath because of that speed, especially when you go up against even right now, Skylar Wallace, who's stepping in. She's the second most stolen bases on this team, 13 for 13. A big addition to this Gator team, Skylar Wallace. As she takes a strike, a ball, want to know the catch. She sat out last year. She transferred from Alabama to come to Florida, was not able to play last year, but is eligible this year, has moved to first base, a new position for her, but she's excelled. 425, one homer, 14 RBIs. A throwback player, Tim Walton describes her. That's a strike, and it's one and one to count. Of course, Tim Walton in his 17th season as head coach at Florida. Came to, coming over from Wichita State, 2006. Of course, won a national title as a baseball player at Oklahoma in 1994. And has built a national brand at Florida. Where the standards are so high, like he even talked to me about it. You know, they had a great year last year, won the SEC regular season title, but all he kept hearing about is how they didn't make the College World Series. That's become the standard. It does become the standard, especially, you know, they won back-to-back 2015-2016, -back, or 2014-2015. And when you win a national championship, people always expect you to continue to do that. And they make it to the World Series pretty much every single year. I think it's only been twice in the last, you know, six years that they haven't made it yeah, or something like that. 16 and yeah. 21. And when you have that type of record, not making it to the World Series like they did last year is a disappointment. The 3-1. The strike and it's three and two. He likes this team. Very hard working team. That work ethic, that's a big part of it is you gotta work hard every day. 
part of philosophy. He feels he's got that in this group with a good group. It's really excited what Skyler Wallace brings to the table. As Woodall here in a battle. Three and two the count. As Wallace hits it to Makari, who looks at third, will throw to first in time to retire Wallace. And Falbury stays at third. Nice play by the freshman, Macario. Yeah, that's a big-time play for that shortstop position right there for the freshman. You know, going into this game, UCF had 23 errors. So when you're going up against a top team like Florida, you have to make the standard plays and you have to make the flashy plays as well. And we're seeing that solidness from the shortstop, Macario, so far in this game. Now Sharla Eccles, All-American, unanimous All-American last year. Takes ball one, currently on an 11-game hit streak. Of course, has done it all, made the U.S. national team this year. She'll be part of the 2022 Team USA team. One of the hardest hitters to strike out in the country. Only struck out three times in 167 at-bats last year. And has only struck out one so far this year in the first 47 at-bats. Crazy competitive, according to Coach Walton. In fact, he told me that if I bring up the fact that to Charlotte that she struck out three times last year, she would tell me that it's three times too many. In the opening weekend, she got that first strikeout, and everyone was, like, gasping, like, she struck out. And it's, yes, she's human. She's allowed to strike out. That's okay. But kind of even going back to what we were saying about the program of Florida always having to make it to the World Series, someone like Charlotte Eccles, she holds herself to that high standard. One strikeout's one strikeout too many for her. Even Coach Cindy Baumalone has said that she has a lot of those same type of players on her team this year. Just competitive, tough. Eccles takes a strike. Of course, Eccles is quite familiar with Sydney Ball Malone. Of course, Eccles was part of that U.S. under-19 team that won the gold medal where Coach Walton and Coach Ball Malone were on the staff. More on that later, but Eccles, very familiar. Here in a 2-2 cow with Woodall. Two outs here in the first. Falby at third. The pitch is Eccles. So to left, a diving attempt. But unsuccessful there for the left fielder, at least Volpe. So Eccles, who is just uh, also an all academic All American, you just don't know, is currently has the highest slugging percentage in Florida history, which is saying something. There have been tremendous sluggers. They've come through Florida, Megan Bush, my broadcast partner here, is right up there as well, among others. But she's number one right now at the, at the pace she's going. And she hits one to left, but Volpe is there. And she makes the catch to retire the side. No runs, no hits, one left on. We head to the bottom of the first. The Knights will come to the plate. No score, UCF in Florida. decade of power performance. And a vision for a powerful future. This is the American Athletic Conference. USAA is made for the safe pilots. For Mac, who can come to a stop with barely a bobble. Lucia, who announces her intentions even if no one's there. And Sergeant Moore, who leaves room for her room. With USAA Safe Pilot, when you drive safe, you can save up to 30% on your auto insurance. Get a quote and start saving. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Batting third here, of course, Shannon Jordan we talked about in the open. She has owned Florida pitching in the two meetings they last year. She was a big factor. First and Ali Schopacher in the fifth spot there, the leadoff hitter. Chris Michaela Macario had six RBIs in the victory against JMU yesterday. And they will be facing a freshman pitcher in Lexi Delbray making her debut in the Florida UCF rivalry here. 
And I love the call to go to the freshman Lexi Delbray because pretty much everyone else in the Gators pitching staff, UCF has faced and UCF has beaten. So you bring in a different look with Lexi, someone who's going to spin the ball primarily, primarily, has a rise ball, appeal drop, change up, but really throws the ball hard at the same time. So you're going to see majority of the spin with that rise ball. That drop ball is going to be her hardest pitch. She's also, how you would say, effectively wild. So you're going to see some balls kind of hit the backstop tonight. Want to know the count to Janisha Rowe making it here, and it's now two. And, of course, Delbray came in relief at the end of the JMU game, but gets the start. She's the first Florida freshman pitcher to start here at the complex against UCF since Kelly Barnhill did it, 2016. 2-0. Outside 3-0. You know. Of course, 16 years ago when these two teams played for the first time on this field, there was another Florida freshman pitcher that started, Stacy Nelson. She had a pretty good career. Going against Allison Keim in that matchup. Two future Hall of Famers in their respective schools. That was my first ever softball game I uh, got to call. Oh, how fun. A few more people here today than in that game. <laughs> Was it a good game back then? Florida won three nothing. Nelson was, you know, typical Stacy Nelson. Got to see the future of the both programs, and there's a strike. It's three and two, and Florida feels they could perhaps Lexi Delbray could be the future of the Gator staff. Eleventh rated player in the 2021 class, according according to Extra Innings Softball. And Tim Walton says for this team to be special, if Delbray could be really special, they could be really special. She's got a three two count here to row. And that's low ball four, and so Rowe gets off uh, on base on a walk here to start the bottom of the first for the Knights. And this is really what we saw from Delbray when she came in to throw that last inning against JMU. Walked a couple batters, had to get taken out and replaced by sophomore Riley Trilicek. So we talk about the wildness that Lexi Delbray, Delbray has, and sometimes it's effective, but right now it's causing her some trouble, and she can't control the ball early on in this game. Kennedy Searcy would have come to the plate, hitting 310 with a homer and four RBIs. Low ball one, want to know the count. Of course, Delbray 5-0 on the year with a .93, but interestingly that both head coaches going with a pitcher that neither team has faced before. And, you know, we talk so much about it's early on in the season, so I like the move to have these two new pitchers face off against these teams because you're challenging them super early on. 1-0 is outside, 2-0. I mean, you mentioned it. Coach Tim Walton said it, the success of his season is really going to depend on this freshman in the circle. So let's challenge her early on in the season and see what she can, how she can stack up against this UCF rival team. She got her first big challenge against Michigan a few weeks ago, had a one-hitter, really had a no-hitter going into the seventh before she gave up that first hit. She was able to collect that win. So she's had a strong season so far, but struggling right now. It's down in the count, 2-0 to Searcy. Rowe, three for four on the year. And stolen bases. You see, both of these teams like to attack in the base pass. They like to be aggressive. Speed, speed, speed. Both teams have a lot of it. As right now, Delbray down 3-0. And part of it is you know what you have in Elizabeth Hightower, the Hall of Famer. You know what you got in Lugo. You want to know what Delbray, how she handles these circumstances. Exactly. And if I'm UCF, though, right now from, for offense, I, I'm not swinging until I get a strike. I have going up against a freshman, you know, high emotional game right now, lots of pressure. Force her to throw a strike at you. Do not swing or chase. Don't help her out. The 3-1. Up high, ball four, back-to-back -back walks, and it's first and second with nobody out here in the first inning. And that'll bring up Jada Cody to the plate. Cody hitting 283 on the year with a homer and 13 RBIs. Show hit with two on, nobody out. Is there nerves in these type of games? I mean, it's in-state matchups if Tim Walton's going to come out. And I wonder, do you think there's some nerves here? It's a big crowd at 
atmosphere, a lot of Knights fans, a lot of Gator fans, a lot of softball fans in Central Florida. It's a big deal in Central Florida. Softball, there's a lot of passion in Central Florida. Is there some nerves here early on? I'm going to be honest, if you don't get nervous for any game that you play, then why are you playing? Because <laughs> that's the fun part, right? Even if you're extremely prepared, you know it's the game plan, you still always get those butterflies in your stomach. But yeah, it gets a little bit bigger when the game becomes a little bit bigger. And the most important thing, especially for pitchers and for hitters, is just getting through that first inning for a pitcher. And as a hitter, just getting through that first at bat, because then that's when you can start taking that deep breath and remembering this is just the game, right? Nine, uh, 60 feet, turn left. And a lot of times these players are familiar with each other. They either play together in high school or travel ball or competed against each other, bragging rights. It's nothing like it, and uh, it just keeps growing every year. And of course, it's this rich state of uh, Florida with great programs, great players. There's now Cody up to the meeting, and that's inside for a ball, 1 0 the count. Cody, four for seven against Florida in the two games she played against them last year. Really had a lot of success against the Gators. That not many do. Florida's last year a top five pitching staff in the country. Once again in the top five here this year. But UCF's offense, Francesca, had success against them last year. Put up numbers that not really many teams did against Florida. And Cody was a big part of that. That's the 1-1. One, one. She tries the butt there and it's foul. One and two. I think last year when we saw UCF beat Florida twice, you saw their offense really just explode. For a while in that first game, Florida was winning, and you thought maybe, okay, Florida was going to close this out. But UCF stuck around, able to tie it up. Then they came up with that big walk-off. So UCF does not go down quietly. They might be down. They might be losing. Are you ready for the 2022 down. NTT IndyCar season? Let's get things rolling here in St. Pete with a second-year driver on the pole. McLaughlin leads them to green. Power has lost it, and he's gone back to third. He's being challenged by VK. It's McLaughlin. Herder coming up the outside in that yellow and black car, looking for the inside for turn two. He can't get it down. A big aggressive move from Colton Herder as the rest of the field seems to file through, unabated a little bit of tight action through turn two and three, but it's a very clean start and a dominant performance into turn three and turn four from Scott McLaughlin. They fan out further back. That's Pato Award. The young Mexican, the hard charger going too wide where I just said there's not enough room for two through here. Wow, that was aggressive on Simon Pagano. Super move from Award in the Aaron McLaren machine. Simon had to hit the brakes real hard. There's Dalton Kelly looking at the inside of turn on Alexander Rossi. That is not a place you pass, but very heads up driving for Simon Pagano. Discretion definitely getting the better part of Valor there, Townsend. Well, Everybody up front on red go. tires so except for Will Power. The red tire is softer. It has more grip when it's new. More side by side. That's Jimmy Johnson in the blue Carvana car mixing it up. But an hour right there on the black tires. I think that's why Will Power got so squirrely on the start and lost several positions. So let's take you back to the start and have a look on the outside power. Slow to get going. Yeah, it looks like maybe he just got some oh, wheel spin on that paint. You see the paint from the runway does not have as much grip as the normal asphalt does. We see Grosjean on the inside of power. That's where the touch is. That's where the contact is. Both guys very lucky to get away with that, to be totally honest. Marcus Erickson looks for a move on Rina's VK. Gets it done in the Husky Honda for Chip Ganassi Racing. The Swedish driver is on the move, and here comes Grosjean. Grosjean on VK. Guys, side by side through that chicane, through the 11 12. That doesn't work. That does not happen. Very, very aggressive move from Roman Grosjean, but a brilliant overtake from Marcus Erickson. He got up to fifth from a starting place of eighth on that first lap, and this CGR car, this red and white Husky chocolate machine, is just on fire as Grosjean tries again down the inside into one. Nice clean pass from Grosjean, but here comes VK looking back to the outside. Decides to back out. Now Palo is thinking about going too wide with VK. Palo in that blue NTT car. And Rahal, here comes Graham Rahal. Look at the 15, the white and blue car. Let's climb aboard. Squeezes VK out of the scene. We talked about when will the red tires fall off. I think in the case of Rina's VK, we're seeing that moment right now. His pace is absolutely disappearing. He is in big trouble as you see the back of that 21 car sliding around. As we see Will Power now moving up Victory on Colin Hurd into turn one. Inside move for Power. Remember the difference between these guys. Power on the black wall, the harder compound Firestone Firehawk tires, and the defending race winner who we ride with here on the Grand Bridge Honda, 
Colton Herter on the softer compound the rev. Dalton Kellett in that turquoise and black. These two are teammates. Oh. AJ Foyt teammates and Calderon puts it on the high side and holds the position. Look at this. A big repair. Kellett back on Calderon. Calderon with the over under. So teammates they might be, but absolutely no teamwork here. As this unfortunately is one of the six rookies this year, David Malukas in the Dale Coin racing with HMD Honda. You don't always need to that have is that his big race home done. run, that big walk-off home in run. Turn four. All you have to do is get the ball into drop, and that's what Doherty does to start this game off. See what happened here. I'm guessing he's off mm. in the marbles. Jay, did you just talked about Florida the excessive now, marble buildup, that spent rubber. Malukas got high now in that chicane, that fast senior. chicane. First and Not third, sure how he one. got high, but as soon as he what did, lost tonight. all traction. It's the exact same crash we saw from Alexander Rossi here. Look at that. Look out. Pit lane is going to get busy. Kevin, this is really going to flip the script on strategies. He's got McLaughlin and his teammate, Will Power, leaving pit road there. Alex Blow at the front end of pit road. McLaughlin does win the race of those who stop, but it does flip the script because all of those teams, Lee, that were planning the three-stop strategy, they all stayed on the racetrack. The two stoppers coming now. All right, let's see how this plays out. Pretty interesting there between the teammates. That was nice and close. How about Marcus Erickson and Graham Rahal getting contact on pit lane? They were... Elbows out, shoulder to shoulder, in fact, contact. Watch the white and red Honda. Oh, squeezes Ray Hall in between uh, Grosjean and the wall. Grosjean's just up against the concrete going, come on, man. That wing's taking a beating so far as they're right on board with Graham Ray Hall coming out of the pits to see Marcus Erickson there. Contact just sandwiched between the two, nowhere to go. And that enormous crowd is ready to see racing with Alexander Rossi at the head of the field. Sees that green first, that's Dixon, then Alex Pillow, then Joe. Joseph Newgarden, then Simon Pagenaud. Look at Rita's VK locking up there in the black and white Sonax car. Treacherous conditions here in St. Pete on a restart because you can pick up so much spent rubber on your tires when they're hot and you've got to burn them back off. But Rossi holds position. We know he'll have to pit soon, though. And he said, well, the 10 goes back to my childhood as Herder on the inside of Power. That's turn 10, one of the trickiest turns on the track, and Power gave that to him. Well, the interesting thing with VK coming to pit road here, he has been behind that 21, has Scott McLaughlin for so long. That's allowed them and everyone back there who pitted at lap 27 to save fuel. Now they're going to go as hard as they can, both from the Glocklin and Polo. Well, I know you were rooting for it to happen, Towns, but not going to be able to make it the rest of the way. Renus VK is going to have to come in, and they're in the window if they get a big yellow, but no way they can make it home on green. All right, so what do you do if you've got McLaughlin or Alex Polo? Do you gamble or do you follow and cover yourself? What do you do? Well, Colin himself said that his car was falling off as the, as the run continued. I don't think that's happening with Polo. And oh, as we see McLaughlin's jumped into the pits. Marty, are you down there? There's the answer. One, one lap of a little insurance here for Scott McLaughlin going a little bit further. As soon as VK pulled off the racetrack onto pit road, they told McLaughlin, go as hard as you can. So he got two extra laps. He has plus one lap on Colton Herta, who was sitting in third on this strategy. McLaughlin has driven a terrific race. Now the question, can he pull off the win? Well, he's going to have at least one lap. Less lap than Alex Polo. It looks like Polo's been learning from Scott Dixon. Watch the blend here. Where's VK? Where's Herta? Looks like McLaughlin yeah, saved the away. He's, he's down, down in turn four, the and there comes VK at speed. You see Alex Polo now has dived into the pits. He went one lap longer, and that is going to put him in a great position to try to leapfrog the number three. This is it. We're going to watch this stop, and then we're going to watch the blend. There it is. Look how close it is. Polo was unable to leapfrog Scott McLaughlin. McLaughlin's got a lap warmer tires. The three has the advantage. Wow. That is a key moment right there. Huge sigh of relief for McLaughlin and the number three Team Penske team, but Polo has really improved his car through this weekend. He seems to get stronger in the race. If he can get to McLaughlin and be in that draft, he might be able to make a move. Look what's happening on track Yeah, Will Powers got ahead of the Sonax Chevy, ahead of Renus VK, the Verizon Chevy. Looking good. The teammate of Alex Polo, Jimmy Johnson, has definitely held up Scott McLaughlin and closed that gap considerably. Scott's going to take Whoa. a look out. Jimmy's making it tough. This is a Jimmy Johnson we haven't seen mixing it up at the front. Gets out of the way for his teammate, but I saw Jimmy Johnson put his head down two laps ago. He started clicking off laps that were about a second faster. Three laps to go here in St. Pete, and Polo is as close as he's been. 
This is tense stuff for Scott McLaughlin with his first career win on the line. And he said, Pelos is sitting there saying, I want to hit that button. I want to get on the overtake, but there's no way the team's going to let him. If he's that close on fuel, he would have to save that much more when he got around Scott, which would probably make him as vulnerable to getting passed back. So as a driver right now, Pelos is in a painful situation. I thought Pelos was going to hit the fence. He got a little wide in the previous corner. It looked like he was sliding around. And for a second there, I thought he was going to get into the wall. Definitely. Di Francesco is the next car on the list up ahead. There he is, just at the bottom of your screen. It's going to be close. They're going to come to two laps to go. Devlin's only a few seconds up the road. And again, has every right to try and fight on the lead lap. Not that there's really any reason at this point. We'll see what happens when they catch there. But this is coming down to tenths of a second with only two to go. There's Devlin Di Francesco in the Andretti Autosport machine. And once you get into turn four, Diff, there's no place to go by until you get onto the back straight out of turn nine. So they're stuck here behind the 29 for a few more corners. And that is giving Alex Pelot the opportunity to set up Scott McLaughlin coming down here. But again, neither driver has hit their overtake button for the last two laps. Di Francesco did not exit that last corner like a driver getting ready to let somebody by. He was sideways. It looks like he's going to try to hold on to his lead lap position. I think the best chance has you're going to get through this chicane here and then go through that final corner 13 14 he's got to get the power down and try to make that pass into turn one that's the best chance he has he closes right 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 hard as you want hard as you want use overtake the whatever drive. you want there we go that's kyle moyer on the number three saying use overtake you've got one lap to go let's keep this win in our column stress to the max here one to go 1.8 miles is the difference between scott mclaughlin being a race winner or not that Dex Imaging Chevy has been brilliant, so has the Kiwi all weekend long. And he's dealing with Devlin De Francesco, one of six rookies in this race. Will it be a factor or will it not? It seems like the gap between all three cars is kind of the same. You see Dev trying to hold on to it over the bumps there. He was sideways last lap right here. He's sideways there again, exiting turn nine. He's not going to move out of the way. He is the last car on the lead lap. And just being a little source of frustration for Scott McLaughlin as he sees his mirrors full of Alex Pillow. As frustrated as he is, that was pretty much Pillow's last opportunity. He's going to be close, but this isn't really a place you pass. He's going to have to really get him off. The 28-year-old Kiwi has sustained the pressure. Scott McLaughlin, he's got 56 All over, take whatever you got here. To the he is now an IndyCar go, race winner. From pole to victory lane, Scott McLaughlin does it. comes from a great Probably background a family, yeah, athletic Fabian's background. Go up and Johnson comes in for part of the future of this Florida softball operation. program. Suchek and Larkin being Bobby. the skill and the sweat in the middle of the park. And then it's a front four that get goals and assists, 25 goals, 18 and assists between walk to Reagan and Jack Bones to stand out. Eight goals, eight assists in the Premier League this season. Balls it was Walsh so who made that great play, that double play to get him out of that first inning. Not just a power, G can play the glove. Yeah, and that's because Joseph Siles had a fantastic season in goal and the back three basic picks itself. Saiz, Cody and Kilman. Bit of a patchwork you take a look at this, you have to Dunker, avoid this Nevis, base runner that's in her and way, front, hops right into her glove, but still is able Silva to hold out, on to no it and know them. to quickly flip over Quang the second five, baseman Adams. Carry low from today. And that's a fresh the players take a knee in the ongoing fight against racism in Shine all the Cheyenne Lindsay takes two steps in, takes a full point. And that's saying something when she gets to start at shortstop. Florida's been in a perennial top defensive team. That's something they emphasize a lot. Coach Williams talked about that, being more of a defensive team. Don't beat yourself and trust a freshman to start at the shortstop. Speaks a lot high volume. Cresswell takes it. It was a far line. Meanwhile, Lindsay, the veteran here, a one and one count. Covered there, Joe so sharp. Not a bad effort though by Alan Cresswell. No, Cresswell's trying, trying to get give something going for Florida go here in the left second inning. Corner, and then he whips it to the goalkeeper's side. Reagan Walsh it. And sometimes the, base on the, the goalkeepers walk. will go Wood a little bit early. And the one one. Strike one and two to count. First came on Wood has been used a lot. Has come Sit in as check. a closer, as a reliever. Close games out has started. Wide by Showing that versatility, she got the win in relief against Ole Miss on Friday night, box. but and didn't Suchek have to pitch it. yesterday. Neither really her well. or Gianna Mancha pitched you want yesterday. Ball to the center forward's feet in the box. So they're fresh going into today. And that's gold that itself. Fouled off. Gold the Knights nearly used Caitlin Felton, their the freshman phenom, to that. shut out and James Madison and then Grace Jewell. Both hands to it. It's a good save in the end from Paul. So you have Wood on Mancha both available here and fresh and not having to pitch. And then you swing it with the left foot. 
and that's huge. Chance of the back post. Up against a Sunday game like Dawson this, you don't know across. how much depth they have going to be. The and so being able to have a Zuma has got in Antonio's way there and sent it over the crossbar, much to Antonio's frustration. Well, Dawson's frustration as well, because just watching it far post, he looks like he's going to win that header. To be fair, what Kilman it is who does enough just to put him off. Of course, Warner was in the air. Thinking everybody is just in the victory against James Madison. Get his head on this and get it on Elizabeth target. Hightower. We have not seen Hightower yet. Here's a chance for and West Ham. I think we were both expecting yeah. for her to throw tonight. He's come in for the interval bomber. And he's been excellent for West Ham United. The season Premier League. Of it's early. The space on the right here one, for Johnson. First on ball. The cross is a good one. And the back post that attempted. Spectacular. Coach Wallace uh, said he's not it. afraid. He'll use everybody, one especially in a tournament city. He wants to see Fabianski. what every pitcher can do. He wants That's to know what each player can do by, by the time he gets to the SEC. Both of these teams, I think, are in the same boat. You see, I think Coach Wallace nice can play. Right. Let's see Wood off the starter. Right Here's a reliever. He's going to make the meter in the American Conference. That's fouled away. Out of his feet. One little look. Red Shy boot, just being outside the ball, right got now. the bend on it, of, what, just not quite enough. Because she's just spoiling so every was worried. single out pitch that Campbell Whittall is throwing. And if you're on the bench and you're watching this at bat, top you must were in the running for him as well, weren't they? But he's been very impressive. Yeah. So you're yeah, learning every single spin. What she likes to throw in each count. Possession one back by Bowen. So many times slides it into the area. Here's Antonio. A chip to the back post. Sliding effort is up target by Manuel Lanzini. I'm not sure if he's standing foot. Just give way on him. But Antonio knew he couldn't get the shot away. It was a bit of a tight angle. But again, the press is on. Bowen it is who wins it back. And then they all go at once. I want There's Antonio. He can't get the shot away then. He just hooks it back. It's a very clever area. Lanzini can't get his... His foot around two it. Two and two, the count. Silva. Cheyenne Lindsay. Look, it goes to Neves. He stands it up into the penalty area. There's a looping header. Force to drink out. Chance potentially edge of the penalty well, area. And put wide by Wrist. one. Delivers. He was trying to place it. And that's it almost. Fouled off. Cody gives it to the look. bottom left hand corner of Fabianski's net. And he wasn't nice far away. Well, Woodall transfer from said, ECU. He hasn't had a kick. He's had one now. Wanted to be a part of the postseason. Like you see him making the NCAA tournament scored. last year. It comes out to him. Look at the space UCF edge of the box. Four when times it finally comes to him. Put it in UCF the net. And he's just tried to go for the corner. In the opening round of the American There's Conference a lot of people around there. Impressed Coach Bob Malone. So when Woodall is interested in coming. When these people around the line go for the pace. Having said that, the drop off at Old Trafford's like about 10 feet. Hit the third and through. Base hit. For Cheyenne Lindsay and the Gators have two on, nobody out here in the second inning. Just love that pitch by pitch adjustment from Cheyenne Lindsay right there. Whittle throwing her outside every single pitch. She fouled off about eight pitches before she's finally able to square this ball up to put it in the five sixes. That'll bring out Sydney Ball Malone to talk to her team. There is some action in the bullpen. Very that at bat. I think she's going to try to settle down her team here in the early. No, and by the way, that's Cheyenne Lindsay's first hit against UCF in her career. She went over six last year. So she feels got to feel good about that. Cody's turning around and saying, who's marking yeah, speaking Suchet? To Coach but he just Ball wanders Malone into the space. They all get dragged game. over she said, we just have to try to slow the game down. And that's something that freshman that Michaela Macario Sorry, mentions. Sorry. That, that's our team on his own with two. slowing the, the game one. down. Because of the speed that Florida has and the power that they can possess, it's well, it so important that the Bruno moment Raj. that UCF feels that Florida might be gaining Raj some momentum, we have to stop it. So you're going to see a lot of time out. Continues down the left-hand side. Low ball in. Silva. Well, Cindy's going to be talking to her players to remind them to take that breath and stick yeah. with their process. And that was good work Sarah from Marcel on that left-hand side. He pulls it back. Longley in the DP spot. Three for good under Lassie Delight. Pulls it back. And Zuma just gets there Could early. Just watch his stretching leg. Right in front of Silva. No, she took a pitch oh, for a strike. Over on the count. Interesting too, it back to Dawson. Here's Rice. One of the best in Good looking ball. Off his line comes so on. That was very effective. Execute it every time. But for how she long? Bowen retrieves well. it. Johnson's cross. Falls here to four nows. Slides it in. Flag stays down. One. Oh, that gets past Griffin, and they won't have to worry about it, Bun, as that's going to allow both runners 
to advance oh, no. on the scoring position. Well, Walsh well, to third and Lindsay to second. The screen. Absolutely spot on. He went down on his haunches so he get a better view from people's legs. And he was onside and one. Now we know that. You kind of say he should be scoring. Goes down for a big chance. Yeah, absolutely. So one and one the kill to Longley. Now second and third and nobody out. Move breaks down and here's Antonio again and he's got a real really takes low for a ball. Connor Two to one the count as the nice ball to get back. And Kilman is still to really warm up. Here. Can he break his duck? Squares it. Well, I tell you, staffs are not Antonio afraid to go by committee if they have to. Might have been a penalty. Still with Kyle saw that in last year. Back he goes to Rice. Square ball here to Suchek and he screws his shot wide. Two one pitch. Strike and it's even at two and two. Antonio at his best. Cody tight. Do you know what? One touch round yeah. the corner. You're not going to catch me. Literally, Tony Caravaggio. I'm not. And he gets away. And once he gets in the box, probably he's just like outside. Went with Macho but he can't get the angle Pando. just to knock it past Saar. And that's good goalkeeping again. He closes that space that's down. That's down the line. That's a fair ball. Fair ball down the line, right field. That's going to tie chance the game again. up on a two RBI double Johnson. for Longley. The now ball Declan gets Rice. away, and Longley will take Here's third as Motoring the ball gets forward. past Molina, and we're squared at two. Cresswell. Here is Cresswell, he'll get there. I was just getting ready to say, when you talk about this rival game, this is the epitome of a rival game in the sense it's pretty. You have to fight for every single run. And Longley just gets this ball fair, just goes right over that first base to stay fair and to score those two runs. Being able to go to third on that rescue from UCF. And now we're back with the tie ball game. I mean, this game's going to go back and forth the entire time. Straight back Buckle up, sit back and enjoy. <laughs> He's going to pick Neto. up where he left off last year. Against Johnson. So a 2-2 two -two game. Emily Wilkie. Size square to Neves. Here it catches. Here go. Takes yes, ball one. Will. I want to know the catch to Fabianski. And he breaks the two twenty two in the year. That's a big Decent hit for strike. Longley. They get her back there he going. Was. He put his laces straight through it. Pedence just wanted it outside him. On his right hand oh, side one there. He's a bit in Wilkie. a better position Wilkie. than him. Perhaps a little... Slide ball would have been the one. one. And, and that'll do. West Ham revive their hopes of achieving. Four looking to get some production. They've moved Katie Kissler down to that nine spot. David Morris. Both of these teams want to get production out of Thomas the bottom of the on his 27th birthday with the only goal of the game. And they have two points behind Manchester United spot. now. It's truly been interchangeable. No one's really solidified and won it. Sometimes you have catcher Emily Wilkie. Who they had to work hard for it. Row. Freshman trainer, the freshman. She started a game against JMU. Avery Gell sometimes plays right field. It's a fruitless few no days really in the capital for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Their top four chances are fading. They're still pulling well up for European two, football two, next yeah. season. Seven points behind Manchester United. They do have a game in hand. Only at third base. But a disappointing trip to London. You're in a 2 2 them. game in the second. The green flag is in the air, and Austin Cinder it takes on. Spitting Gus Malzahn's here. We're going to have back and forth a boat meal. Punches thrown, I mean, as far as this meal, just action. There's tons of action. Countering the other one. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think it's going to be a very physical matchup right now. Who's going to really have that competitive fire to want to close this game out as the winner? 2-2 Two is Miss Lowen. Both of these teams, they like to be road pitchers, right? They take a ton of pitches. They want to force your pitchers to throw everything and then try, try to attack. I think that's what we saw in the first inning. Eric Jones to lead careful, lap one to from Austin out. Center. Eric Jones led the first ten laps, and then Tyler Reddick got ahead of steam really right up by the wall. Powered around the there was a strikeout of Jones Wilkie, Camaro, strikeout and he has set sail. He's let these last three in the laps. Second. When you yeah, think of Tyler Reddick, you need somebody out running that outside. Nobody that there. Look at this. It had been for Joey Logano. Kyle Bush. No way Kyle she's Bush had drifted to back ball. from third to about uh, right uh, to get the first out after you give up some and then hits there's a round ball. coming off turn number two. So you can see his Kate car right Kistler there in the top seam. Point. He thinks he got the left rear stuck in there, lost traction and uh, lost control of the car. One. Kistler hitting 400 on the year. And we are back to three. Tyler Reddick and William Byron up front. 
making her everybody, eighth start. including Kurt Season. Busch, who was under penalty at the start, still on the lead lap. That inside car will lose a lot of air on the side and get so much more oh, no. unstable and loose and hard to hold on to it. And it looked like they went through their side, pretty stable side by side. Chase Elliott just wants about the lead. Peters not being able to really solidify Spun yesterday, yesterday while night. going for the pole. For the bottom half of that lineup. Someone like Katie now, Kistler last year. He she was, was first. Just a, he was fastest in round one. He He's going to have to get cleared up. And he off. did it right there. But this the year she's so been getting important. some great at bats and putting some balls in place. So she's been now we saw a spin starts. by Kyle Busch. Oh, car on the wall the and leads to the front and it's Chase Elliott has bounced off the wall. If you're not an everyday starter, you're still always competing yes, for Yes, he did. Spot. Both ends. It doesn't matter not if just you don't the start right Saturday game because you might start that Sunday game. Slap the right to uh, blow the debris Someone up. Like Katie Kistler, Chase Elliott she's goes around and, and caution and flies for the second point. time today. She's gone from bad to worse. She's ahead right now, three and one. You know, it'd be so easy for yeah, her I'm just sure he's got a little damage you know, from the first two times he hit the wall the there. That's what car my messed up is. just a little Why bit, trying to make it as long as he could Why until the caution, and uh, unfortunately it became a caution. Cody Ware is four laps down. Kyle Busch minus three. It's that one. Chase Foul Elliott and Gary nice Smithley bullpen. are one lap down as Tyler Reddick and Eric Jones lead the back to green. Now the count is full. Another full count, though. Working the count here as Woodall's pitches uh, mount. Some Austin Cindric audio. Already her 60th pitch coming up. In the second. She saw Josh Balicki went for a spin, running 29th at the loses time. loses Kistler, who walks. It's first and third, one out. And you also that saw gets now Martin the, the Truex Gators get up the and uh, brush the wall. And that caused everybody to scatter to behind him. Definitely Watch the 19. First inning throwing 26 pitches already in this inning, 34. We only have one out. Whoa. I think the two might have missed him. Uh, now we top of the order, Falby. I believe you're right. But I think the five hit the two in the left front really hard. First and third. One out. There's a strike. Eight laps to go to, to the end of stage one. Fan out, out the See if Florida returns the favor what we saw UCF do in the bottom of the first when they took off and stole second on this first and third situation. See if Florida does the same. Comes around yeah, I was going to say, how many first and third did we see so early on this game already? Well, Falby shows her power and hits one to and deep Reddick left field and that ball is gone. Win. See ya. And his first a three run homer by half a second for over. Kendra Eric Falby. William Byron and the Chase Gators Briscoe. go out on top five to two. Larson, Bowman, Logano. Blaney, Sendrick, and we mentioned Stenhouse. it in last game that Chase you cannot lead them play Kendra Falby like a straight up two. slapper because of this. She gets a pitch that's elevated and she capitalizes on it. Someone that just creates so much natural torque in her swing that when she connects, it's going to go. And we see that power from that leadoff ball. Game. And that has knocked out Kemal Woodall out of this game. At least for now. And she will come out. As Kyle Larson nice spotted the, the wind is giving him a good push down that back straightaway. He's giving the team a new nice pitcher when we return. Lead, You're in the second inning, he number four, in the four across the the five two lead over you UCF. Here, clear up. That's what the five cars listening for right here, and he's going to hear it. Three Robert. wide for third. You see Denny's car there come off the apron and uh, hit that bump Power. we were talking about all day yesterday and saw some dust fly out of the bump, but something's still uh, hitting that ball pretty hard down there. And then you see another push from Tyler Reddick, pushing the 14 to Chase Briscoe right back around Larson and the five back underneath of him. This is the racing that I came for right here. And a vision for a power. Kyle Larson Houston just became the race's sixth different official leader at the start finish line. Chase Briscoe in front. American Athletic Tyler Reddick. USA is made for the safe bike. You can't spin, turn four. For Mac. One car up by the wall. That was Christopher Bell. With Everybody takes ev uh, evasive action. Lucia. Denny Hamlin has already come on to pit road Even before no the caution there. flag flew. Here at lap 91. He leaves room for her room. Now Hamlin was on his way in. Regan? Mike Denny Hamlin had to pit early right there. Get issues close, with the temperature on that race USA car. The gauge kept climbing to 315 degrees. Said we've got to come now as you see he passes through because of that caution. So that's there you see the new Knights pitcher in relief, but let's take it down to the field for our third member of Reddick our team, and Briscoe, Jay Parquet. Once again, Jay. bring them to green. Thanks, Eric. 
Today's a special day in Night Nation. Not only uh, are we playing Christian the Gators, Bell's car but still it's Leah White's birthday. Most of you know Leah White from last season. She is the only pitcher at UCF to beat the Gators. Looks like She's I had an incredible story, an incredible career here at UCF, but an incredible life. She had that early sense made that car better. He's not that unhappy with the race car. car. The second issue, though, live. these restarts, she, she keeps getting the, the wrong line, and, and the caution is out. Incredible career here, and is now helping the Knights with uh, pitching. That's a pretty hard assisted. hit for Chris Busher. He was one of the drivers who spun yesterday without contact. Uh, thank you, Jade. And uh, boy, Leo and White obviously was beat Florida twice. And on the lead lap when Great that story happened. there behind the scene. Premature birth and uh, accomplished the all-time wins done. leader. 99 wins. Now a grad up coach here at UCF. And and she's worked with Angelina DeVoe, who comes in here. She got the win in relief against yeah, Texas radio there, so blew a tire on entry. And she's that southpaw pitcher who's going to bring a lot of spin into her pitches. Can just see it right there from that first pitch. She can really throw it all. Mainly is going to go east and west, but you're going to see a lot of that finesse type of swing or excuse me, type of a, a windmill. So Florida batters are going to have to try so yeah, to let this ball like travel. Last restart really went through the bottom of the one and two really, really fast. He got through there fast enough Basically, to actually clear Hannah the lead. Adams. Uh, don't know how long he'll hold him off, but it's doing a, a great yeah. job through that first What's set of corners. The thing really has up front had speed in these runs. I don't know if it's pressure or hard, it's just the way the setup is, but really he has a ton of grip table, and, and comfort right off the bat. When these other guys are coming from the corner around, he's able to be very aggressive on the restart. Adams slices one to center, but the catch is made by Rowe for the second out of the inning. So Devo slowing that velocity down. You can see Adams really having to let this ball travel. And this could have been trouble because of the lefty spin Cost that Adams seven, created, but Rose catching it securely. Last lap of stage two. Tyler Reddick has uh, so two opened outs. it up on Aaron Jones, turning his fastest laps of the race within the last half dozen here. Back to Aaliyah White. I guess that explains that they're about. racing for the last her stage birthday, points. Her parents so were that's, uh, here. They had their traditional yeah. get-together and breakfast. They're watching now. They then go back to it's work It's time to get home. established in these stage points. They're they don't so have to stress about these day game days anymore. I gave everybody a pass last week. The day took a 500. It's all about that Harley Jones trophy. Now we need some stage points, and Tyler Reddick and company get it. And the young pitcher, Mike DeVoe and Caitlin Feller, really kind of picked Aliyah's brain a little bit. They know what she's accomplished here at UCF. She set the mark. UCF's always had this tradition at pitching. For all the 20 Byron years they and Hamlin. Tyler Reddick, Eric Jones. Strike two and one. Yeah, Aliyah White, she just stays in the bullpen. And she's able to bring a perspective from a player and as a coach, as you see her right there, leading that bullpen. I think it's Lodge in there that's throwing. And not only did she set the standard from a pitching performance, but really what it means Austin to Austin Cedric way up high on that yellow deuce. Look at the launch. He gets off She's the corner. She's so loyal to the school and so loyal to the program. Gets blocked for his trouble. Stay on yeah. She saw Cole coach. make that quick move. He was probably hearing the same thing from his spotter, but cover the top and get up there. And uh, he had a pretty big run to learn from for, Coach for Sidney Ball Malone. Sidney the uh, said, uh, Leah's got to bring back a lot of memories when she got into oh, coaching and worked for her mentor, oh, trouble. Brian Cozy. And, and, and everybody scattered. Team Strike. Now it's three and two great. now. The count. Ahead and come down to Skyler Ray. Wallace. Go trying to get the Knights out of this city. Tyler Reddick. Jamie. He just radioed to his team. I got a vibration. He's saying it's a right rear flat. His team getting up on the wall. Trouble for our leader here as he drops. Oh, Payoff hit. He hits Wallace the hits it to the right and side. And Byron through. is involved. Base hit and a two out single. And now caution Skyler Skyler Wallace. Wallace. Ninth caution of the day. And that's just what Skyler Wallace Well, it definitely went from right. bad to worse right there for Tyler Reddick, but including well, William Byron. He was making his way back up to the front. That even if she's Huge blow for pitch, them. I think that tire is blowing out. You she's alluded to it earlier with Chris Busher. Maybe possibly running those things too well on there and eventually got the best of it. Yeah, I didn't mean to jump in on the crank it up there, but I saw on the edge of the camera rubber fly off the back of his car and immediately slowed up. I think he blew a left rear tire right down in turn one. Got you know, Coach Walt even said that you know yep, there Wallace even beat him single-handedly when she was at Alabama in the game. Well, what I love about the dynamic that Wallace brings to the squad is, especially when you look at the infield for the Gators, they have a lot of talent, but a lot of quiet leaders. 
Charlotte Eccles, Hannah Adams, Reagan Walsh, she's a freshman. Now, Carr's so getting through on the inside. They don't speak up as much. Well, and then you have Scarlett the Wall is that, that was really odd. That was yeah. really late. It'd be out. interesting to see the whole view if there were some other cars around. Runner goes, there goes Wallace. The throw to second is not time. He was, he was oh, right on point. Scarlett has made his now way to his pit. 14th of the year. caution out. And you knew going into this game that you're going to see a lot of stolen bases. Just looking at the staff, looking at the data. So if I'm UCF, I just have to expect this and just roll with it and not let it affect me. Ball and a strike it's a to count to interesting Eccles. to me that 43 had control of the race and chose the, the outside. Pops so it up foul. So Cody. Much good fortune on inside. Every it's center of start just flying through one or two on the bottom. The dugout. Coming out with the lead a lot of times off a of turn DeVoe, two. DeVoe, I mentioned, gets uh, her first career time, win as a knight in relief against by. Texas in that Chase wild Elliott game in Dewar. Back and forth game. And she was the one pitcher that shut Texas down. That earned the victory going the last three innings as the Knights knocked off Texas 15 to 10. If you don't get it close, coming back from a 9 6 deficit in about 15. Now NASCAR has the restart under review, One, two. making sure that uh, Way, two, two. you got to leave that given to go of confidence. And it's given the so. Coach Bubble and the staff confidence in her, what she brings there after shutting down a post okay. Texas offense. Well, I mean, the control the say, is we talk so much about yeah. how control important these early season matches are and how important getting that experience and in. And if I'm Angelina Duval, all of a sudden I have a done. win oh. against a top-ranked team in Texas. That's confidence building. 2-2. Two, two. Eccles hits one to deep right field. That ball is gone. For the second two run homer for the All American Charlotte Eccles. Gives Florida a 7 2 lead here in the second. Here. It looks like uh, Bubba's was trying to squeeze up in the middle here and uh, got Brad in the left rear and uh, started that. I mean, she's an All American for a reason. And Eccles earned Sirica. that home run just fighting pitches off of DeVoe that were outside the entire time. And then she Bert finally got a pitch that was right in her wheelhouse. We mentioned moonshots earlier. This was a moonshot. You see this inside pitch elevated. Just yeah, Brad was coming down. Off. He was splitting that up. I mean, in all fairness, Brad was coming down, but the option, you either wreck yourself a right seven there. Seven runs, second inning for Florida. He out of the gas. Here's what we're I'll tell you, Francesca, seeing him here in person all weekend, this offense might be the best offense Florida's had here Pretty in a few years. They were kind of inconsistent yeah. last year, but and I think that's the trust you have with working for, with a spot for a long time. You kind of, you kind of understand all showing power. Time. This is the offense Florida here that is really clicking early on in the year. That was something Coach Walt said they worked on. He didn't like how they finished the year last year offensively. Boy, it's an old-fashioned slide job. Of course, right Eccles is one of the best players. Here. She's going to be a national player of the year candidate Ooh, throughout the year. Third place, right the behind them, three wide. And, and coming offense, right up through the middle really is Blaney. On one or two players. Go back one or two, three years. Ross Chastain, Just turn four. Producers out of that lineup. A lot of smoke. Down to the inside. Walsh. Everybody looks Off like Dorney's it's going to get through. Molina's Chastain. Chastain. Throw to first. Did Dorney keep the bag? Yes, he helped kept the foot on the back to get Walsh out well. and end the inning. But Florida scores seven runs. A three-run homer by Kendra Falvey. A two-run homer by Charlotte Eccles. Yeah, again, it's seven like two gainers. Go to the bottom of the second uh, here trying in Trying to run down a 43 car there, just a little lower than him. It was kind of the same area where that bump is. Kyle did a great job on that Project restart. He pushed him on the straightaway where he was stable. As soon as he got to the corner, he made sure he picked a different lane because those, no those little tires physics. weren't going to hold on for more than it's a corner. Life. Joey to the bottom. Your path is affected by actions and forces. Joey in the pits, he got out of his pit stop final. It looks like that clutch issue, uh, you know, didn't bother him. In the wall. By uniting world-class faculty, in the wall, cutting edge research, there, and access to opportunity. He's got to be in the lead right here. The coach is going to come out. There's still like no green. Other university. And look at this. Ready to change yours? USAA is made for the safe pilot. I think Chase might have hit the wall. For Matt. It definitely hit the wall. Who can come now, Coleman has made it to pit road. No caution flag. Lucia announces her intentions. Listen and wheel that thing. No Throttle there. down, up off the gas. Settle in it, baby. It's so different from the last time we were here two years ago. With USAA safety, Chase Elliott after safety, going a lap down. 30 percent of the round trips. Get a quote and start safe. And safety. caution USAA. ways. What you're made of, we're made for. It'll be four laps to go. Larson outside, Suarez inside, and Remember that? I was a cover girl in 1998, and today I'm a cover girl. Thanks to Simply Ageless, America's number one anti-aging foundation. With the pumping power of hyaluronic acid complex, 
It's skincare and makeup in one. For instant wrinkle reduction and healthy glowing skin. Once a cover girl, always a cover girl. With Simply Ageless. From Easy Breezy Kevin Jones Beautiful, Jones run off the top. Girl. He's the third car back on the outside. He's led a lot today. Down to the bottom goes Logano. There you see the SEC preseason poll this year. Alabama preseason favorites. Even though Florida is the defending regular season champions. Of course, Alabama won the tournament, beating Florida in Tuscaloosa. Watch this the push year, the from the 43. Eric Jones pushing on Daniel Suarez. Here comes a run. Last year, and it came down to drops down to make the pass. It's not clear. A lot of dramatics. Florida having to win. Back out there, back out there. Like clear. The last five out there. Clear, 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 clear. Like the last three or four series. One at Missouri. Yeah. Dan Allen with the bottom. Trying run to make something seventh, happen. Doesn't have quite the run off the court. But the top of the game. They share the regular season title with Arkansas. We saw there in the standings. Is Elise Volpe here to lead off? If he pushed a little bit, he's off. In the second inning, a 7-2 lead. Daniel Suarez leading this race with two laps to go. Here comes the big run. Regular season title every year since 08 up until Arkansas. In the draft, drops to the bottom. And at the line, Larson by a car length. Florida will host Three the SEC Chevy's tournament for the first time for the win. since 2005. I expected him to shoot the bottom and try that apron to try to get rolled up in the May. middle and side draft him. The white flag waves, one to go, sponsored by Credit You're One Bank. And around goes the You're 31, sliding down <laughs> through the grass. You're inviting me. Everybody may get through. through this. He bounces off the wall. You see, of course, the, the American we Conference are still Championship green. will be in Greenville. Jeff was originally three supposed to Bill. host in Orlando, but has been changed. Eric to Jones closing now up Volpe for second. Here in a three-one count, can anybody catch Kyle Larson? Hits it to left. Not today. That's out of play. Here. Foul. Ross Jones, the big run on the outside. So uh, payoff pitcher Dylan to Volpe. Nice trying to get some going here. Right down to the five. tail of the five. I mean, if here they come from the checkered flag. Stacey Nelson Plaza Kyle hanging out. Oh, keeps that surfboard trophy in California. Man, what a race, and you can't really say enough about Austin Dillon, uh, Jones, and Suarez. I mean, I don't think anybody would have picked those guys to be second, third, and fourth today necessarily. That'll be not so, handled uh, as the ball goes over the head of Falby, and Volpe reaches here in the second inning. She's at second base. We'll start with, See, with that defense. Yeah, it's not like one change to the other team, team that Boston so has to come to do a pick for any goal. There's no meaning in Godfrey there on the available, so Keenan and Holgate have to deal with the problem of the false nine. Good news for Evan DeCore, he's back in the team. He's been missing for months. Danny Van Der Beek on loan for Manchester United. He makes his third straight Premier League start on one side. To the left, Anthony Gordon's been in good form. He won't be on the other side. And there's no Calvert Lewin in the squad. And he's got a muscle injury. So Charleston will lead the line. He's got four goals this season. Champions that come this time. Yeah, Pep Guardiola makes one change to the side of dramatically lost. Against Tottenham, Ederson in goal. Premier League leading 14 clean sheets. They've been behind before. They were down on Friday night against Ole Miss. They were down against Texas last Saturday. They've had some comfort behind victories. And Molina is down in the count only two. That's a double. Double, by the way. Official scoring ten doubles for both. Bernardo Silva is an interesting selection. And as we mentioned in the last year's game on this field, UCF was down five to one in the third inning. Came back to win. This team is used to coming from behind. They're not going to be phased. Down this round, Jordan Feld as well. And that's what's important. And the Gladys Street end. Sometimes as teams when they see seven runs up on the board, they can shut down. 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 Uh, starting 11 came game, out with Ukrainian flags draped around their shoulders. It's a wonderful show of support and solidarity teams. for their teammates, so their teammates' families, and for the entire nation of Ukraine at this I care most difficult of times. Not take any risks, but you have to. This is from behind opening night against Georgia. Gordon. Against Stones, you see up now Gordon no still the stranger to the SEC. Playing to work on that old miss that played Tennessee as Molina hits one to the right side and it squirts through. As Volpe will come around the score. Just like that, the Knights respond and it's 7 to 3 as Molina drives in the run. And this is what UCF just needs to continue to do get ball on barrel, put that pressure. You had second baseman Adams. Space here for De Bruyne. Nicely found. De Bruyne. Hit to suit. Took the left footed shot away. Couldn't come up with it. And tipped it enough to allow Volpe to score easily from second. If she's at least able to stop that ball, the run is not scored. And just drifting into where the referee is. Behind Allen and DeCore. Kayla Macario will come to the plate. She will hit here with one on and nobody out. 
right now of your state, probably the Stacey Nelsons and the Alex Kimes, the Shelby Turniers, the Kenzie Otteses, Alicia Casio's, Kelly Barnum, some of the great pitchers that have played in this rivalry. They gotta be thinking to themselves, what are we, what am I watching right now? <laughs> These offenses are just attacking. Yeah, it's a, it always had been historically, you know, one nothing ball games, two nothing ball games. I remember going up against Alex Kimes in the regionals, I think it barely was like two nothing. It's a great first touch, gets the ball ahead of himself. In 08 regional. Play the percentage. That really talk so much about shot the game there and, how it's and hit it across the goalkeeper. He's got time to it do that. He has his really attempted ball to start. Four hitters being up here able to just, just getting so much better. Constant there's threat a lot with the ball at his feet. Right Charleston wanted a shot. Try to level, level level out of the way. Things out and try to give a little bit Still more power back to the pitching. Can he get his shots away now? Weaving towards the edge of the six yard. Pitch outside. Want to know the captain Macario has got a hot bat. It's driven in nine runs this he weekend, including six yet. in the win against James Madison. And you know she's talked oh, about openly about you know confidence going up and working on some of the mechanics. Should have been one to Everton. a vicious challenge by Richarlison and his teammate. Freshman. One out, takes two and out. She came into this weekend batting 2 0 2. And right there. now she's posted, she's posting 3 0 3. She didn't need I mean, to check that with the that in. average go up 100 points just from this weekend alone. Snapshot and from Richardson, good hands by Edison. And she said, really owning her body. Gordon for Everton. Looks good. And Love when I talk track. about body angles, we're Edison talking about, drop. okay, so for a drop yeah, ball, it's going to have to be the perfect free kick to be Edison from there, but a bit lower to try to get it really that, well. that drop ball. As Stones has made a very good run into the penalty area. He goes square here, Bernardo Silva. Phil Foden first time saved by Pickford. Foden again. And she takes a four-pitch walk. Sterling can and sail it's two on, nobody out around here in, in the Coleman, second. And it's straight to Pickford. And that's going to bring out the second attempt. Tip Walton. Oh, that was lovely. Walton with a purpose. The city and in fact, that's going to be it for Lexi Delbert. Really trying to keep their shape. The run by Stones that you spotted, Arlo, was excellent because it allowed going to take Delbert out of Foden the game, to cut in bad, off that right-hand side. To make and try to bring in a fresh, I should say Bernardo. Right hey, Merrick Laporte. We'll tell you about the new Gator pitcher when we come back. Here's Phil Foden. the second here in Orlando. Early Florida, cross over the head of leave, Sterling. Threatening. And it's an excellent effort by John Stones with his left foot. Remember the saved first by time his England together? colleague, Jordan Pickford, who can't prevent the corner. Yeah, and Everton not quite able to clear the ball here to a dark blue shirt. Stones anticipating it really well and a lot of dip on it, didn't it? That left foot strike Schedule sits up nicely for him. Consultation at moving quite a lot. Pickford not taking any chances. Here to help you find the Here's De Bruyne. For your Sterling point. first time, the flick by Gundogan. De Bruyne on his right foot, danger here, saved by Pickford. Forged with a sweet, sweet heat. Wendy's new hot honey chicken biscuit and sandwich. A marvel so marvelous it can be. Two fantastic saves, particularly the second one by Pickford. Choose Wendy's new hot honey chicken sandwich with biscuit at breakfast. Winning the ball, I think, pulled up and now he's not got off the pitch. Maybe a little bit of cramp in the hamstring. Fantastic second save. And that challenge there from Van der Boven. See him go for that left hamstring straight afterwards. And we could all stretch now. That's exceptionally strong hand by Pickford. Lovely effort as well. Bottom of the second. Florida with a 7-3 lead. You see mounting a comeback. So the Gators go to Bernardo the Silva. And they go to Riley Trilicek. Yeah, Riley and Trilicek. Again. When she first came into Florida, Running she looked like bank. a freshman superstar, was going to get a lot of innings. Stood up by De Bruyne. But then you had COVID the happen, and some the time top. off. They had some other pitchers that come that in. That was close. In, so Once again by Manchester City, Phil Foden. Year, but this year, They're certainly starting to get tired. More, really in that Everton deeper and deeper. And there's that overlap so again and Phil Foden side, just not been able ball. to get high enough she can go east and lovely west, link up play flip ball in by De Bruyne the ball low. Foden not being able to hit the target to face Janisha Rowe. finds Decore Gord is making a terrific Walk run back in the first inning when Knight scored two Decore finds him two possibilities here for Everton Florida Gordon responded into with the seven in the second Stones the Knights have gotten a run here in the second inning and into the side netting beyond the near post to Rowe First came over from Florida Gulf Coast. It's a fabulous break this. Iwobi doing well to feed Decore, who then sees the run of Gordon on that far side. Missed three and a Good numbers forward here, but look at how quickly City get back into position. You have to ask yourself, are these Mara's pitchers again. from both teams just nervous to compete, right? Nervous to throw La the ball up there. And this is primarily, this is a lot of walks, a lot of balls being Bernardo. Thrown. That's not normal. 
No cross takes a deflection. That's a four-pitch walk to row. And the bases are loaded with nobody out. For Kennedy Searcy will come to the play. When we talk so much about this being a rival game, be especially in the last two years, when you see making it so competitive, but they've made their own luck here, Manchester you City. have to be ready Take for this game. You have to show up with it's your best game, both from minutes. pitching and from hitting and for Phil defense. Foden with a crucial goal in the title Searcy race. Searcy at the plate. Which could send City six points clear Those once again to Kennedy. of Liverpool. Ball one. And these two teams are patient. They will take walks yeah, all day long. Really That's part of it, too. I think these two wave offenses are very of, similar of when it comes to that approach. And that was something you probing by City, you get the first fall, touch there from Holgate. And commanding it. Which just redirects the ball into the path of Foden. Oh, low. Two and and you see Michael Keane is flat-footed by that deflection as well. Can't it. react quickly yeah, enough. As a batter, you need to know what your feet are. stuck on the you floor. You need to know what your average at and what you're not Foden at. So on his toes first to react, and pitcher, it's a simple tap-in. You start in. to figure out, okay, this is the pitch I want to see. Oh, lovely ball Two in. Missed low. Three Three and Excellent goalkeeping by Edison. Oh, is that handball by Rodgers? So Riley's struggling to find the strike zone here since coming in relief. This will go to VAR, Delbert. no question. VAR is taking a look. Kennedy takes there, there's a strike, it's three and one. Martin Atkinson is the man at the Premier League match centre. And he goes towards the ball, Rodri, and it's below the T-shirt line, the arm is outstretched. The three-one. It appears to That's be to below second. that T-shirt line. Home, and they'll get the force out. But it's offside, First out is it? The so, yeah, the offside was after the incident. And just the and that's out how that the haters needed. We start Say playing Ryan's a very relieved low, Rodri. And if you're in the strike zone, let your defense work. Florida's always going to be one of the Everton top have a free defenses kick. in the nation. But they can't help you out if you're throwing balls. It's over. So get the ball somewhere around the zone. Of those Force them City to get some outs with that into the air with So now Jane and Tony will come to the plate. It was a day of... High emotion. This is loaded in support one out. for Vitaly Nikolenko and out in the first Alex Zinchenko, the Ukraine internationals. She takes it a took strike. 81 minutes. A couple of deflections of Holgate of and Keane. Deck. But Phil Foden has pounced for an absolutely crucial goal runs. in the title race. City goes six SCC points team. clear once again of Liverpool. The rest and Cody of the game in rips one to center, but right to Lindsay. They're going to tag the runner and she will score. Down the shoot, 30 seconds. Macario comes in to score on the fly out go. there by Cody. And it's a 7 to 4 Texas. game. This is what UCF does. Just so competitive. And it's the and able to come up in any situation line. to try to get a run to score. This is situational hitting. Doesn't have to be a big home run, doesn't have to be a gapper. Just get enough of it in the air so she can score safely from third. And she does that. First and second, two outs. They appealed to third to see if Macario so was win early, but uh, no, no avail the there. The and now Sheen and Jordy come to the plate. Two on, two outs. She takes the what strike. a start for Styles Robertson also. Now he is doing I mean, this really, is definitely really the well. batter that I would be most afraid to throw off to, off especially when I'm injury. looking at someone so like Riley Prilich. She's struggling to find the zone. A lot of the pitches that she's thrown is right down the middle. You have to be careful Robertson now with the inside line. Does he have enough to hold them off? Yes, he does. Here she go. Here comes Fulker to the inside. And Fulker takes over second. One on the count to Jordy. has two career home runs to get to Ford. Only one of the two UCF players. The, the history of this rivalry did hit two home Stiles runs. Robertson. And on the outside, big speed coming. One, one. She hits a grounder. Oh, oh, the glove of Trilicek, and everybody's going to be safe. I'm Chad Lawrence right now. Uh -oh. oh, right or down? Yeah, as a pitcher, Levi you're Kitchen always told, do not put your glove out if you're unless you're 100% the going to get it. Because in that situation, shortstop Reagan Walsh had every four. opportunity to the make that play. The East class is mm. But again, UCF has to take advantage of this momentum that is on their side right now. Continue to score runs. It will be RJ Hampton. Shot Pocker will come to the plate. Base is loaded two outs for the senior. McAdoo running one and two. Really incredible take strike. I mentioned Doherty. Two, two home runs against Florida in their career. The other one, 
Rachel White Schmidt is out. did it in 2003. Well, it's the second year of the like program. Like Daniel was talking about at the opening of the show. Hit two home I mean, runs in the same in game. He's been in this position so many times. That game. Shot blocker down in the count 0-2. I know been able you were to expecting check Stephanie Best words, a name to come I up. know, I would. No. Oh, that was always Jeff the answer, right? up to third. Now, Stephanie this would be huge. Never hit a homer again. Check out this run. He's going to get in the whoops right here. He could make the pass right here. Yeah. Smith, a teammate of Beth and Jenny Schittenhoster, who's in attendance tonight. That gets the win in race part of that inaugural and team in 0-2. And what a showing by R.J. Hampshire off Jet Lawrence. So Hampshire takes third. More to celebrate their 25-year anniversary. That's a story in and of itself with Cameron McAdoo building the history. finishing in second. Tradition. Race number one on a triple count night here for the fourth. We're on a one-two count. We go racing in Arlington. Hits one to left, but Falby is there and makes the catch. The Knights chip away to get a couple of runs in the inning. And at the end of two, it's four to seven, UCF four. It's crazy. Oh, he gets passed up, though, right up the inside. Bringing home the Batman Hills away from Little Caesars might make you feel like Batman. Smart top bullfrog spawns. Honda team got their bikes running good, getting some good starts. Oh, Anderson to the inside. Yeah, Brayton overshot that corner. Anderson was lined up, was able to make the pass. Never mind. But at least the, the new Batman tells only when the cow's own crust will make you feel like you're a superhero. The Batman in theaters watch fourth. Red Bull KTM rider out in front. Who's getting with three triple crown wins. Looking to do something here tonight. Mark it. Now Malcolm Smith, yeah, right Malcolm Stewart will take the lead. Sorry, Let's guys. make it no count. No problem. Malcolm Stewart with some great work. With that whoop section came out hot. Got it on Mark Luskan. Almost the first So now Stewart out of front. Luskan. And here comes Jason Anderson. The 2018 champion is going to make a run on Marvin Luskan. Nice. Hot time, family. What Feel that beat. Come on. Uh, it's good Woo. clean racing. Doesn't force the issue. Oh, and it's really been a gift to having me live with us. But as a nurse, my training told me she needed more help than I could provide. So I connected with a place for mom. My senior living advisor understood our unique situation. She quickly recommended communities and set up tours. A place for mom helped us get to a decision. And now, mom is so well cared for. Our service comes at no cost to your family. Connect with us today. Gonna have there's two laps to go right Tomorrow here. night, UCF Softball closes out the night's classic against oh, Oakland. We'll be here at the UCF the Softball Complex. Join us live or tune in to ESPN Plus. Support your nights. Be on the air at 6 o'clock. Oakland really had a good tournament. As look who's back in the circle here, here for the night. Uh, look at Marsha thought he was going to go to the inside. Little. Now, for those that are new <laughs> to softball, you can re enter uh, the re entry rule, especially as a pitcher. And so, Kamo Udall re entering yeah, he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to play in the third right inning. It, it's definitely different to see the starting pitcher get taken out in the last inning and then get put back in in the third. And the next one coming up, who would have expected that the Angelina DeVoe would have stayed in or even the other one would have come in. But I feel like I saw Chris and Udall alone. Not Cooper feel Webb, super he comfortable with DeVoe that in that situation. So maybe Masha and Cornell and Grace Jules are being warmed up yet. Marcia's so they just don't want to go run. with Woodall, who is just so competitive. Like she's someone who always wants the ball. Even if she feels like she's given up some big hits, she knows that her perseverance can get her through anything. Here we go. 250 from AT&T Stadium. Cheyenne Lindsay. Here to start the third inning. Lawrence on the inside. He can protect it. First pitch is a ball. I wonder, too, yes, if perhaps can. they worked on and mechanics. Maybe that's the other part of it. She is their workhorse. Work. She can, can throw every day, it? and I wonder if that plays a factor in it. I think, I think Coach Bobolo feels we got to get some more innings here. Yeah, yeah, like Lawrence sits in second even. place. Martin you know, maybe sits in third. Maybe change up a little bit more. We did showcase him that much earlier. I can see Jet Lawrence. 1-0 is fouled off. 1-1. Something to right keep in now. mind, too. People might be tuning in. You see, we're used to seeing Gianna Mancha. She has faced Florida a lot. She faced him last year here. She faced Florida, she faced Florida when she was at Boise State in the 2019 regional final. And I think sometimes that plays a factor in the decision, too. If the pitcher has seen that team a lot, try not to overexpose them, especially when these two teams are going to play again in Gainesville in the regular season. And as you know, could play in May. In a region. But it, exactly. Is, I mean, the they have those two other games still. So the at Florida, and another one here at UCF. Would win the overall. 
and oh, always he tries hands to get out up the inside of his teammate. Now he's going to lose time. The University of Florida, 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 Florida State, State, like they did last year. And that's the biggest thing UCF is trying to stop, trying to be able to host a regional. He is right in there. Ball sliced into left field. Volpe is there, makes the catch. Really, really fast last For the first out here in the third inning, to retire Lindsay. First out in the third. dropped. He went down momentarily, so he's going to lose that fifth position. As McAdoo tries to you said UCF is going to Martin, have to make some big time Lawrence plays defensively now, if they're going to seconds. take it away from Florida. We'll see, yeah, That's a big time that out from the left the fielder Volpe line. and you There's see not Campbell Woodall right here before fist you start to her lean teammate. the mic over. That's silent confidence Everything's right there. Good. I love that. Yeah, and then what he does is he now Longley has got to be playing with some confidence herself. She had that big double, drove in two runs in the second inning, pushed out, and you know what I love about that last out. And Longley drops one into left field for her second hit of the game. The Sarah Longley on the and Chase having a good game right here for the Gators. And, and as a pitcher, when your so team is backing you up, making some big plays, Tomac, it just gives you every more reason for why Google you need to actually sitting don't in feel like you're on an island wow. by yourself. Yeah, you feel really that support system. Far back. He snuck up the inside as and that first quarter. As continues to have a good game and make a really six, great play in left field as well. Guys. He could have tried He's to right dive there. for that ball, but the rule is if you're going to dive towards the line, Anderson 100% the drive, you have to catch it. Takes the lead. Because what happens if you don't do this? Backstop. Exactly. There's no one there back. So up. Anderson now leads with 524 to go. Want to know the count? Plus one left. Emily Wilkie, how often did you dive during your outfield? Contact by way of points. He lost it because I was slow. So I had to, <laughs> I had to try to get to that ball quickly. Fourth. My only option. Yeah, I mean, it's going to go. Wow, that was nice. Tomac but, uh, I used to always say, uh, uh, my slowness allows me to make some web gens. Okay. Or Sexton to turn or down early, but he puts Sexton had to for the lap rider. My former uh, teammate, Nikia Williams from UW, said, you know how you make a top 10 run, play? Cooper you make a bad first one. Six, Tomac <laughs> also on two six. So this Are you giving out all secrets here? Huge if you like That's Tomac to get a pass. Jay Sexton, and here we go. He's had enough. That was in the round. It could be, yeah. I could see that. Right here. Two balls White and a strike. White is out. Jason Anderson has a lead of Wilkie, under three and a half seconds to go. And the runner now does a lap rider come into play and give Eli Tomac even a chance at trying to reel in Jason Anderson. He's going to be a pitch. I always wondered as an outfielder. There's a big crowd. There's crowds all so over the outfield here tonight. Left field, Jason. right field. People are standing. Crafty. He'll be able to as an outfielder, are you aware of that? Do you block that out? Because I'm sure you're hearing noise. Or What's it like as an outfielder where you have an environment where you have fans all over? Around you. For me, it was fun because normally you feel like you're out there by yourself and being that player who just wanted to be in the action. I was always talking, supporting my team. So when I had the stadium behind me, I loved it. It felt like I was on the big stage, big lights. Jason Anderson takes race number two. And that's the thing, though, especially with these two squads. Here we go. The game, the, the more hungry you should be to want to play, to want to excel. You should never be afraid of being on that bigger stage. Welcome it. Own it. And it looks show like off Jet the Lawrence had it figured out perfectly. And he three, two, a strike three. looking frozen. As Woodall gets the strikeout of Wilkie for the second out here in the third. And that's exactly what Woodall just does. Only in this moment right now. She was pounding Wilkie inside and gets the strikeout with a surprise on the outside corner with a big fist. Who is in the perfect position, and it's Cameron McAdoo. Jace Owen, Two number outs. 81. Owen gets the lead, and again, now the Jet gets here. another entanglement, so Jet Lawrence is in Take the strike, go with one right to count, and a walk. Corner, went right there yeah, it was funny, it was asking me in between the innings, have you ever seen grip, this where the entire outfield is crowded? I mean, normally you see left field crowded in the Georgia game, you and I call it crowded in left field, but it was not crowded in right field. It is definitely crowded in right field in the parking lot. Wow, it is packed. I actually remember the last one that he So now it's McAdoo and Brown going one and two. It was all crowded in the left field. It wasn't on the right ball, though. And I remember thinking, like, oh, yeah, gas, gas machine. We saw him take a hard ball earlier today. He bounced back. He did. What an extra inning. Although, I thought of you that you the wall at center field in 2010 was a lot taller than it is now. Took down the wall that it was there. Kitzler gets a base hit up the middle. Two out hit for Kitzler. 
with the it's seven first and second now, two outs, and that's big because that gets to the top of the order, and Kendra Falby will come to the plate. Remember, coming into this race, Ricky, all tied on five points. McAdoo, Porter, Kessler's and off to a really good and now start. Looks like McAdoo this year, and now Falby kind of race has this thing. If he the big three-run right homer in the second. Yeah, and this is perfect, perfect. To for left field, we've been talking so much about her speed, 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 and she showed her made power. Made the pass for the lead early. All he really has she to do hits at two this on, point, two outs here in the third. Hit your marks, make some perfect laps, and ride this thing to the checkered flag. Now, one first thing pitch about to Jeremy is Martin, high ball one. I remember you in that 2010 game. You drilled the ball to center field, which the other part would have been gone. Oh, but because there was that big Martin wall, like the, the, the Red Sox mafia across the wall, it went off the wall. You slid into second base, and you were in the And part of it is because you wanted to win the game, but part of it is because I think you felt like that should have been a home run. Jace Owen was going to the inside to protect. There's nothing you can do. Watch what happens here. I didn't want it to go extra in. We saw this. We still had a long drive left. Yeah, that's right. It was a week. It was a week. Come out of that outside. They just have so much drive. The guys on the inside, they can't get the power connected to the ground because it's so slippery. The guy coming on the outside, I just don't think that they're able to anticipate that. Well, Jet Lawrence making up a lot of time. There you go. They awesome appeal to the third. No. You can see, oh, much faster uh, the oh, 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 oh. swing there. Two and one now, again. Get yeah, you have to play like on this field when they I play They get slippery. You don't get them squared up. Right, the right the along the hay bale. The gap is just He's so big. Up here such a long run to get to the fence. So this oh, is just gets a little loose. To play as a visitor. What a save. A little surprise. A little surprise. A little surprise. A little Florida has two. Yeah, ball's been jumping from both sides today as Falby hits one to left field. Bro gets the makes the catch. Call it off Falby there wow, for the third out of the inning. They come out of the corner. Woodall gets picked up right. a zero right. in the Jets third. We head to the bottom oh, of the third. Like Florida, Florida with a seven four lead. Clips a tough block. Excuse me, tough block. And I'm not sure if that shot him to the right. Yeah, well, clearly, he didn't want to cross Everything jump I'm on wearing, Austin Forker. There's no way that that he would do that. And well, I just see how his balance was off right there as okay. he was taking Auto off. Auto insurance oh, that flexes with you. Oh, that's wow. what we're made for. Flag is out. Cameron McAdoo bringing this bike around. And what a race it's been for the 48. This young man has been looking for this moment. And at the right time, he was in the right place. We can talk about making your own luck. Cameron McAdoo stayed clean, and he stayed fast. Well, he did, and he was the perfect place at the perfect time. You know, I go back to Jet Lawrence, and that was a tough lick he took with Austin Forker, but Jet Lawrence made two forced errors, two of them. I did expect him to make the same mistake twice. Add drop to every drive. Accelerating Audi SUV no cannon. No one near him, and McAdoo gives a wave to the mechanics row. That emotion. Cameron McAdoo looking at his second career win, and he will take this one gingerly around, and it will be. Yeah, to the Cameron bottom of the McAdoo third, and seven to four lead in, in favor of Florida. Of course, Sidney Ball now Malone and Tim Walton, very familiar with each results. other. Cameron McAdoo, we talked about this. Head coaches, start. of course, they were on the staff of the U.S. under 19. That's good. Look team at the that rest won of the, the gold Somewhere medal in California. Ledger, there you see the photo. There's Tim yeah, Walton there with Coach Ball Malone in the middle. Right Heather Tarr was cap. the head that coach. How She's on the right. And then Tony Baldwin was the new Georgia head coach on the far left. They were the staff of that 2019 what a, what a U.S. team that won the gold in dramatic fashion on a walk-off against Japan in the end of their 19 gold medal. And they're a really close bunch. Uh, that staff, Coach Ball Malone and Walton, know each other so long. In fact, Coach Ball Malone told me it was Tim Walton. You know, and it was a reference to her. Can he it was Tim Walton talked to UCF yes, about how good she'd be a great fit here at UCF. And the, the head coaching shot. job was oh. open with Coach Renee Lawrence Gillespie left to go to be the Iowa Stewart head coach. Tim Walton's longtime friends with Brian right Cozy, the, the Pacific head coach. Who obviously coached Coach Ball Malone. Yeah, Look at that. Well, that's a heck of a staff. The real wheel, the real defender of Ken Rockson. He was stuck. They have to say because they're such great Yeah, Webb went down. I saw him go down in the first quarter. I think it really shows. Just how well respected you're going to see Ball Malone is. But yet not only am I talented enough Eli Tomac, it to be last on that under-19 team uh, in the USA team to be a coach, but also the respect that she gets amongst the other by. college coaches. So and because Anderson, of that respect, this is what we see this weekend here in Florida with Ole Miss coming in this weekend to play this tournament. Griffin hits a high fly ball to deep right field, and it stays at the park. 
are allowed out as Kistler makes the catch Anderson continues for a first out of the inning. Eli just talking about how big this ballpark is and how deep each other have to try to hit it in order to get a home run. You know, in some of their ballparks, this might be a home run. And Anderson Georgia cuts has a short porch. The if they're playing at UGA, this could be a homer. But instead, it gets called up for a 16 uh, easy race. out. Nine seconds. Sexton goes down. Volpe now so at the Chase plate, Sexton taking one and count. Coach that Bobo was the Eli pitching coach on that U.S. national staff. Position. Of course, so Coach Bobo was a, also an assistant Sexton for Heather Tarr at Washington for a couple of years. Holding on to third. And who knows, that staff, maybe we'll see him down the road as Heather right Tarr is the new U.S. national head coach. Replay. Her first Come year taking over from Ken Erickson through the Olympics. So you he never know, they could reunite. Chase Sexton does. He saw that Malcolm Stewart was turning early, exiting the corner early, just couldn't get on the first brakes. First Florida has Charlotte Eccles is on, was on that under-19 team lap, so that won the gold, as was Skyler Wallace. To hold off Eli a lot Tomac. of familiarities from that team. Race number three here. First Eccles will be a part of the Eli national Tomac team this year. Has the coming up. Lead on the overall, and he has the points. Amanda Lorenz will be on that team. Michelle Moultrie. So it's a lovely international game. This is time to be smart, right? Yeah, really enjoyed that experience. Picked so Tim Walton's to brain by. and Jason's Tony right. Baldwin's well, brain about hitting. She's one that will ask questions, always right curious the about the game. And Deep both of these coaches, Robinson they're always willing to help out. Tim has helped out many coaches and they have a good relationship. It goes way back. Anderson playing clean. Eli backs it down just a little bit. Race number three will go the way of Elmo Gray, but the overall endurance is going. To Eli Tomac. Yeah, especially when I look at Tony Baldwin, he was really the first so coach down. that Eli talked about three, two, creating those body so angles no like we were mentioning earlier. On the night for him, but he you was know, and Mr. Consistent to seven points. Then Jason to Anderson so and early. Cooper Webb. Volpe up the middle and through. Base hit, a one-out single for Elise Volpe, who has her second hit of the game. She had a double in the second, and now singles here in the third. And this is the second time that Volpe has beaten the shift. She did it in the last, her last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and she did it in the last race. She did it in the last race, and they're in the right five, position. Nine Premier League goals. Harrison on the left. And Dan James is always whacking a uh, million. He's got a first pitch here to a ball to Katie Burt. He's got just four goals and two assists in 2020. Talks so much about Olympics. the U.S. under 19 team. Volpe was on the Canadian games, under 19 team that won the bronze that year. Alongside Volpe. Florida outfield. And then here you got Katie Burt, who's been a part of the Great Britain national team. It's amazing how many college players now have so much international experience playing for their fellow countries here through in the summer. Winks and darting on that right hand side of midfield goal partner Roy Berry and Sessignon. And then up front, Son is having another fine season. Olympics. Scored nine goals, provided five they're assists, both cut highs. Kuliseski, Bjorn Lomlinger has slotted in really well since his move from Juventus. He scored a goal and assist in his first four games. And Harry Kane starting to show that world class form we've come to know. Nine goals in the last 15 games, all competitions. Warm applause around Ellen Road. Great down in the One, two. Cross that ball in the through the left it. field for a base hit. Underway. Single for Katie Burke. And, and the Knights have two on, one Excellent. out. And there you go. They call first number as you deliver. And this is the second time this lower half of the lineup for UCF is starting the rally, setting up the table for their big boppers up at the top, the ones that tend to come through the most. So when you're getting that production in the bottom half of your lineup, you're doing something right. And now Michaela Macario, caller Lala, steps in. Two on, one out. Releasing Sessignon. She takes the strike to a one to count. Mentioned she had six RBI in, in the victory against JMU. If this was any other program, that might be in the mix to be maybe the single game record. Maybe the most and ever by a shortstop. Not in this program. The record here is also an NCAA record. Want to guess who that is? Stephanie Bess. That's correct. Had drove in 11 RBIs in 2003 yeah, against Army, where she hit two grand slams. Wings. But don't ask her about that and game because the first thing she brings up when I United ask her about that game is the one at bat where she just missed the third home run. She just missed the pitch. She didn't He's swing at it. She regretted it. As soon as he gets a pretty good game, I think you're fine. You know she's going to be in trouble. But from there, 
That's a wonderful ball, just fed Those across the box. Like, oh, had a bad game. It's a great start happened. for Tottenham. If they needed One, their nerves settling, that's Can't the Tottenham that goal happened. that we've expected to see this season. But that's they've the kind of standard that we were talking effect. about that Florida says, that Coach Cindy Balmalone says that she has Up that this year. The players of this. who are stingy, who always want to be on base, who just hold themselves to such a high caliber. And you know those type of players are always working to be perfect. You know return. you can never be perfect, going especially in this game. It's a game of failure. But if you can practice like it, if you put those intentions out there, then you're going to be more successful. He's taking to life in the Premier Two balls, League two strikes to count. Two on, one out here in the third. Mario hits it right back to her. Riley will underhand it to Leeds first United to get the out. Two. two gone, but both runners now advancing to scoring position, second and third as we go to the top of the order. Oh, that's brilliant from Kulisevsky. Good play Riley by, by Riley there, and kind of being caught. Right, Claudio Costa's are underhanded. Make sure not to go too crazy with that against throw to first. He's too and easy. Yeah, that's Tackles an missed. Got a lot of Bird from Furpo. To to. Then from the Rensa. And, and then, then as soon as he steps in, so he's on that area. This is the Kulisevsky area. This is where he wants the ball. Pitch to Rowe. Ball one. What a no finish. Melier, yes, you say, oh, it's your near post, but it's gone like a bullet. And he's got the whole goal to aim at. It's a big goal for that man. May have been frustrated in the way. One ball, no, no problems to today. Janisha were walked in the first, walked in the second. It's low ball two. Two it over the kick. Cox onto it. Rafinha. Cox back off the post. If Rowe can extend the inning, blocked. Kennedy seriously would get the hit here. Chance and he's just read it really well. Got onto the ball and then said, okay. I'm going to throw a leg out to him. No real control over the finish. Outside three to Kulisevsky. Now Kane. Kennedy right there. right there. As far as Pierre and Fobierg, who looks for Kane. Finds him. Hoping to get an opportunity. From Harry Kane. 3 0. That's a strike call. It's three and one. Top class finish. And that's from a top class strike. You never want to tell yourself this is why I have to get this batter out. But this is a huge batter right now. Because if you now. walk bases loaded, you're going into the heart of this lineup, especially someone like Kennedy Searcy, who's that veteran senior for them. Uh, it's a wonderful vision three from Roy Bergen. Away, it's a ball four and row. Gets on on the walk the for the third time in this game. And that'll be Harry Kane. Kennedy Searcy is even better. Coming he in, does vet, this day one of the leaders on this team, came back from an ACL you know, injury last year, injured in April, in that area, against these Carolina, he'll missed the rest of the year. It doesn't have to be the brilliant back. strikes, it has also to find the corner. Also a good season here, and now she hits perfection. with bases loaded, two outs. He takes ball one, you're one that can relate, you had your share of history with the ACL. Not easy to come well, all the way like back, she's Antonio starting to come on. Take confirmation that the goal has been given. Really find her swing with that the injury she has at that. In the space of a week for Harry Kane, who takes his uh, tally for the season play. in the so Premier League on to eight. To try to feel comfortable with it, and rightfully so. She's hitting up against it. They're going to have to have the most extraordinary of second we halves. Here's Rafinha. Ailing. She has to rely on that brace. That you could see exactly, exactly what he was trying to do, swing. and he wasn't too far away from doing it. And right now, she's ahead 3-0 and as Krilicek. Falling behind, that running behind from Rafinha. It was seen him doing Nowhere it. to put her. On the right-hand side, this time on the left, and he knows exactly what to do. Three and no the chances the count. in this half. Spurs have probably... And that one goes into the backstop. It's not going to matter because it's ball clinical. four and a walk. And that's going to get a run in. And the Knights are within two, seven to five. Nelson, up through the game. That's going to bring out Mike Bosch, the, the pitching coach the for Florida defense. right now. Is Trilicek's off for game right now. Finish. I mean, two back-to-back -back walks with non-competitive pitches. Oh, this is pitches. what he can do, Sia. You have eight straight balls. Oh, my God. Right. Just gets one it wrong, wasn't and all of a sudden he's there there running out the back one, But still, I mean, you he's have to ask yourself. was he for the hospital ball given? Why can't she get to that ball? What is she feeling? What's missing? And that's an altogether more classy run from Kane to Doherty. First Mike Boss now has been on the staff for a few years. Take Took over for Jen Roach, who was the longtime pitching coach at Florida. Now at Oklahoma and Rob Amato, Patty Gasso and company. Should he he gets another out? gem of a pitcher, really Jordan Ball at Oklahoma. 
And, uh, but Bosch has done a good job. It was a long time Syracuse head coach came over, Doherty to took over, and Flora has been tremendous from the a pitching staff. Top five in the country, ERA wise, since he's been here. The looming post was but the UCF only thing that once him. again giving him fits in this nil. game like they did last year. Bases loaded, two outs, and Jada Cody now stepped to the plate. He fouled out in the first, down and the then they sacrificed well, fly in the second, drove in a run. He could be on for another. She hits here. Base is still loaded. Some two Let's outs in the third. A two-run game. Dangerously at the moment. He's felt like a spectator at times the way these goals have been scored, and, and that's a strike. So whatever was said narrow, seemed to work. Gave that space the first pitch strike. well to stay up and stay square because he's trying to slide out on the angle. And then you're asking for your defenders to help out. They certainly did that. It's a tough skill to Old stay one square to count on, to Cody. but also come out on an angle as a goalkeeper. Way ball one, one and one to count. And look who's on deck. Shannon Doherty. Now winks. In that last pitch, Doherty. that Trilicek just threw. James has gifted it to Kunisevsky. And Kunisevsky. Charles Lowe and draws a good stop from Ilan Melier. That's a great block. <laughs> it just there. wants to be in this area, doesn't it? By Emily Wilkie. That was not an easy ball to handle there. That is an incredible block enough. by the catcher Melier. back there. I mean, she's already learned the lesson the from the first start. pitcher off. that she's seen in no, this that's game. That's, that's an option up for him. Spin, especially when they're struggling with throw he's strikes. Set. He's ready. He's waiting. He's balanced. Birch right. The speed at third could have scored from that. Cody hits it up the middle and through. Base hit. Birch is going to come in to score. They're going to send the runner. She, two runs will score. It's a two RBI hit for Jada Cody. And we are all tied at 7-7. Tried to bring down Dallas just as well he could. Dallas, can he finish? And this is why waiting, you can waiting, never waiting, take a breath from going up against UCF. They are going to come back. They are a stingy bunch that huge, know how to come up release. with big hits when runners are in scoring position. And again, trying this to be all too confident. started I from that then, lower half of the lineup. Volpe getting it can, started yet just again. Delay, delay, and the delay. top half coming through. And was brilliant tracking back. Two RBIs in that play. Three RBIs. You have to take the shots on early. In the game for Cody. We are tied 7-7 seven, seven, only in the there. third inning here. Second and third, still two outs for Doherty. He takes a strike, 0-1 oh the count. So the Knights have responded after falling behind 7-2. to two. With two in the second, three in the first. Bryant. Told you all to buckle up. Chances Here we are. I mean, this is going to be a, a straight up bullpen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who can come in and pitch oh, a fight? This is Leeds in a nutshell today. Two strong innings, when strong they do innings. get it right, when they do get their butt man, man one is the low in the dirt, ball they one, one and one to count. Chances, um, I, I think the, the craziest thing, though, goals in, in this recent inning, weeks. we have not seen any action in Gators in the Gators bullpen. While Trilicek's been struggling to get this last out. And now we go through the game earlier today against JMU. Lexi Delbrae came in and so did Riley Trilicek as well. Finish that game out. That's going to be Two and one. a testing week for Leeds United. Well, James Madison, United that was a 6 0 lead oh, for Florida. James ball. Madison fought back. Had four. the go ahead run at the plate in the seventh inning, to your point. They had to bring in all these pitchers. Florida held on to win 6 to 4, but that may have had a factor here tonight, here on this second Leeds game. As Doherty swings and misses, and it's 2 and 2. We even had another one of their pitchers, Marissa Messimore, transfer from Leeds United. Pitch in that game as well. You see the big swing and the miss from the power hitter Doherty on that drop off of Trilicek. Oh, but again, you know, Elizabeth Hightower has not thrown any pitches Combine again. this entire weekend. So soon as he scores, did she go? Turns, they appeal. Spins. They say, the yeah, they say, yes, they say, yes, he did, and that gets Coach Paul Malone out Just of the box for the move as they go to the third base umpire, and they say Jordy went on on the swing, such a and the inning ends, but the Knights get on. three runs He's in the inning, highlighted by a two-RBI single from by Jacob Cody, and, and the at the end area. of three, here in Orlando, Florida seven, UCF seven, they're watching the American on ESPN+. Plus. Who scored home this and away is against Leeds United it last season has another one to add to I couldn't his be happier to come back and give back and invest in these girls. Into double figures for this Premier League is goals for the season. A historic moment for young girls, young Just women second across goal the in country. His last nine games in all competitions, but you can see what it means to him. Thank you, Ben. And when you've got a mate like Harry, no wonder you're smiling. Oh, we thought that last time, and it was for sure, but this one reeks of Rafinha. Oh, 
the second time this afternoon. Leeds hit the frame of the Spurs goal. James. Shackleton. Well, Leeds slide ever closer to the relegation mile. A fourth successive Premier League defeat. More heavy numbers against. And Marcelo Bielsa finds his reign in uh, real concern as Leeds United season lurches from bad to worse. As for Tottenham, just the day they needed. Four goals, a really Is good performance, some clinical stuff, and Harry Kane at the heart Someone of it else's. with a goal and an assist. After the lows of Turf Moor on Wednesday, they've the hit the heights at Allen Road this Saturday lunchtime. Matt Doherty with his first goal for the club, Kulusevski with his second in the space of a week. Harry Kane this Tuesday, again, UCF baseball Kane returns to John Juliana Park to take on Stetson in, in a midweek game to kick off the month half. of March. Join Final us in person, Road, tune in live United to ESPN Nil. Plus it's to support Orlando's hometown team. Greg Love, Lady in the Night, taking two out of three. So, what what do you make of Kevin Colbert talking up um, Mason Rudolph's five four and one record and how and that's as a backup? Start. And looking forward to seeing what's next for him. What did you make of that? Kamal ben? Woodall will not a whole start lot, here the fourth I mean, inning in a seven seven they have under contract game. right now. And Hannah and Adams to lead it off. Adams, Wallace, and Eckles. Right now, he'd be two three four to hit for Florida. That doesn't mean he's the first won't pitch be. is a ball, um, one and over the count. You know, if you're wondering out there, and I know some of those pitcher alums I referenced earlier are wondering. I'm wondering. And then have a you're wondering, others. I know you are. Where the highest scoring Florida UCF question, softball game ever you know, whether was here, be believe it or not. 2016. I mentioned earlier Kelly Barnhill pitched in that game. Shelby Turnier pitched in that game. You're thinking that's a great pitching matchup, right? Two, you know, future Hall of Famers in the respective schools, two All Americans. Ended up being a 10 6 Florida win. Big, big swing. I just think anytime in case. Rogers does one out of Green out. Bay <laughs> in case there is some smoke in Seattle. Who knows about Kyler Murray's Instagram page? I mean, what about the happen. big he swing shows up going so out the door for Kevin Florida. Colbert? What about and that I, one? I just don't think Florida's ever no. really prepared um, for it. I'm pretty emphatic Even on when that. They, I mean, they, it they, won't happen, they but say I don't, that they're prepared. I don't they don't show it. They have more need to know the count to Adams. Aaron Rodgers here in the fourth here inning, a 7 7 game. To make them a of course, that Bowl game, like many of the previous matchups between be. these two teams in the They're regular season, were on a midweek year. Wednesday night. They have too many this is the first time in the regular line. season these two teams There's are playing on a Sunday. Right now. They have played on a Sunday before. It's usually on a regional final Sunday. played in the regional final in 2016, in 2014, and 2008, 2008. I think you're familiar with that regional. Here? Yeah, a lot of holes and uh, the two one pitch Florida knocked off UCF and aging in that region of Florida would go on to their first ever women's college is. world series appearance. But the Knights um, took a game, ended them. Florida's 41 game Deshaun win streak. Watson? 36 at home as Allison Kahn pitched the shutout. There might a one nothing win hit the walk off hit. Florida would then bounce back and win the if necessary game 10 to nothing to advance the world series. Even if he has settled everything. And as they say the well, history it, and it uh, you know, kind of went from there. Things, that was right? a pretty historical uh, region in a lot of ways for both happen. programs. I mean, it's not, it's, we shouldn't even be talking so you got to go to the first time, time no first chance. of many win <laughs> pilot world series appearances for Florida. That was the first no regional it would final be. for UCF. So uh, what did you history. then make of Tomlin talking about at some point? I forget when when it was. I think it might have been his press conference heading out of the season after the loss in Kansas City about uh, two mobility at quarterback off. and the you know, value to of that. Right yeah. now, um, stingy, yeah, just what about that? that kind doesn't, of mobility doesn't ever switch. give up. Um, there's Lamar Jackson you know, and, mobility, and, and, and there is Ben Roethlisberger mobility. You know, Ten years ago, was really close that gap down. You know, they could play us tough, but then they would play a different team and, and not show uh, up as tough as they did against Florida. They would close that gap down. They've been such a strong name from them to form themselves. He was more able to pass rushers, and I think that's more what Mike Tomlin meant. As low it's as four, three, along and two. Those lines, and they've rather continued than, to beat and knock off you know, top caliber uh, teams like this, the Georgias, uh, like the Old Misses, like the run Florida, for yards. Texas. Ed Boucher of the Athletic Pittsburgh here on the Rich Eisen Show. What about the draft? Yeah, Coach Bobolo wants to host a, a regional here, the Chief. They believe they the can get to Liberty, Oklahoma City. Uh, appears As Adams hits one through a base hit. Leadoff single for Hannah Adams, who continues to be 
excellent yeah, in her craft. I would say anything. It's another hit. She had two homers I mean, earlier today in the win against JMU and round. continues her good play. I, think it's Kenny I know I love that. She did not have a home run so far on the season, but yet hit two earlier in this game. Case, and this, uh, this at bat was about that, 12 see them going the pitches that she fouled off, but then that I, I then able to finally square it up. And that's what makes Florida so deadly and what we're seeing from UCF. The patience and knowing when you want to swing. Uh, someone else is a so veteran. So now Skyler Wallace will come to the And then get the quarterback next year or uh, with Adams you know, just, at first uh, base. Hmm. I don't think I don't think they're going to. You're get in the fourth Kenny inning. Pitt. I don't That's the guy I think they would want. So there's no sense at all of trying to Both make a big splash, runs, a flashy play at quarterback. I know game. that that is against type, if you will, but. <laughs> you know, after having Roethlisberger for Coach as long as they had the him, first pitch. Clearly and just the going we have a football and because this division, seven, seven. Ed, I don't need to remind you, but uh, you know, I'll just throw the it out. I, two I mean, out. there's Lamar twice a year, and Burrow. You see what Burrow has turned into. So Woodall's I mean, behind and, two and, and depending on how Baker shakes out in his Knights fifth year, it'll be interesting if close staff you have. You mentioned her last could half easily be not seen Elizabeth dead last on the quarterback race within this Mantra. division Will in 2022. Make an appearance and, before this game and I don't know how that would be sit with Steeler fans. You obviously would know better. Because on the one hand, you want to win this game, but you also know you're going to play again later in the year. And again, with the history, like these two said, teams seem to always Aaron play in the regionals in an even that. year. I mean, they may have a, could see each other again. So there's kind of that balancing act. Yeah, you have you have to play this smart. The division, and again, let these but let these younger you pitchers get this experience right now. He's not a free agent. You know, they they do have a lot of salary, more salary cap room Strike than three and one to count to Wallace. But they need Obviously, to use that like in their offensive line a, or defensive line or inside linebackers or secondary or wide receivers. It's just too much. I, I just don't see it, Rich. But Kama Whittle, this is her first year in the Knights uniform. It's now so time for another edition of Second Take, take where Chris Brockman so hands me hands me um, uh, actual topic bars from the first take for me to react to. Go for so, it. So here's the deal. They weren't as crazy Monday and Tuesday. Nothing really that great today. Okay. Again, okay. A lot of NBA mics. Woodall. I don't know if She's you want to come off the All-Star break. She can eat up in it. Yeah, no, Mike doesn't have NBA I think that's part of it, too, okay. why she re-entered this game. Chris. All right, first up, and this was from Monday, uh, coming off the, the All Star weekend, Adams LeBron takes the game winner. Steals Curry second, the ball nuts, into the outfield, and Adams will take third Who base. is the that face of the NBA right now? As the Gators LeBron once again attacking with their Steph. speed, Steph, 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 Steph putting the Knights' the defense in. Yeah. Yeah. Big right strikeout oh, for Woodall, but now the Gators Steph have a runner at third. Doesn't want a title. I'm, I'm concerned though that my second take has been immediately concurred by Mike Del Tufo. It's giving me concern. But um, I, I would say Steph Curry. My, my kids, my kids would say Steph Curry over LeBron, if giving them a choice, and they are, as you well, know, the, the next consumers of, uh, of sports Adams to go to third. In, infotainment and entertainment. And she's got Steph Curry, nine steals I think herself. kids oh, by the way, love she reminds him. Everybody, you know, I can run too. And People guys love him, and I don't understand Skyler how Cleveland Cavaliers fans boo him. Too. He is now easily Charlotte the most unbooable athlete in America today. Eccles one I will for say two Steph tonight. Curry is the face of the NBA. Two run right homer back in the second inning. Right. Did, you did, mentioned did this earlier in the game. You thought UCF had to be not? sound not defensively I, 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 here. Okay, 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 so far now, a couple of errors. Do you have any music at all? Florida, I'm going to the lead. It's the runner. It's the runner. It's the runner. He can't do that. He can't do that. John Tesh will come and after the game, he literally put me in his spot. He would spank me. Good enough. This is great. Yeah. Great. Thank this you. This is awesome, man. Yeah, Shout out to DJ Frazier. This is great. Okay. All right, another LeBron topic here. How much of the Lakers' struggles, 27 and 31 right now, ninth seed, looking at the playing game, Yeah. how much of the Lakers' struggles are on the block by Griffin? That sounds like a, a, a first this take. Is a yeah, this is fantastic capture play so far now, um, in this game. For does this include him as the general manager? Yes, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. So, yeah, then, so then how much of the Lakers' struggles are on LeBron? It's definitely not his level of play, catcher, yeah. which is remarkable. He's a man of his advancing age, which is what you can basically say. He and is. He's like a senior a citizen in the NBA. Speed, You're 19. That's incredible. And the way he is playing base. is unbelievable. And his drive, and physical, it, and, and spiritual is as keep good keep as ever. As so I will say the general manager, LeBron, is the problem. 
And really get uh, that's why I'd love to everyone go seek it on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Rich Eisen Show. The conversation with Brian Windhorse yesterday that he doesn't care. Like all of his moves that he's made as a general manager, de facto general manager, not working out, doesn't care. Fix it now. Fix it now with whatever you got to do, even if you're trading the mortgage of the future. So the general manager, LeBron, is the problem with with the Lakers right now. He receives the blame there. But in terms of on the court, I guess. First you, and third you one on Westbrook out. not being uh, somebody who's transformationally talented like tonight. he normally has been in other places. Too. You know what's funny is that Stan Van Gundy like tweeted this out happens, uh, like maybe, maybe yesterday or the day before. A game. If you just look but, at I mean, Westbrook's look numbers, at the, yeah. he's averaging 18, 8, eight runs, and 7. Eight hits, so, which is a phenomenal base, season. Base he wrong. just doesn't so like really base running fit with the components and the makeup of the Lakers right now because when you have first he's and shooting third, so horrendously third, from three point you land, have what which is call, like, down what, on, a, what a team like LeBron needs, needs around yes. the dirt are three point shooters. Right, which is why would you bring scoring, him in in the first running. place? Yeah, and so LeBron said all along, we'll make it fit, we'll make it fit, we'll make it fit. It's definitely not going to fit. He's not going to get moved into the offseason. Okay, what else you got? Okay. Another ba- another basketball, another LeBron the topic. Third or yeah. and uh-huh. third, you're going as Rich a Paul, you've heard of him. He's basically running the league. He said that the, the path wash. First and third, one for out. greatness and championships has been Eccles harder for LeBron than MJ. So they were talking Side. about this. The, has it actually it been? Is Rich Paul right, essentially? Has LeBron's path been harder than Jordan? Well, this sold out crowd has been uh, boisterous from really since the beginning than of the pregame. People have been tailgating wow. for hours out there. Yeah, I, I would agree that it has been. You would. Why? That's a nice because shot that he's not as great as Jordan. Well, shit's up the middle of the Woodall. Easier, as Jordan they get was Adams brilliant. here between third and home, and Woodall's going to try to get and that oh, and Woodall threw it away. Path. And Adams um, will score, was and Florida similar regains to LeBron, the lead. I would say eight the Cavs the first couple of years were just as, you, talked about, Francesca, you know, not ice. ready for prime and, time and as Jordan is. No, terrible. I want to jack, drag a really no bad what, team into the Florida finals. Just Spurs just right. causing chaos right. on the base you know, path. Cannon Adams is a dead out at home. I would say so that is that a shot at the Cavs? That the Cavs didn't build for him the way that Jerry Krause built for Jordan? That he didn't have a Pippen? No. Is that what, like, what is, what is... Paul's Paul's extra Paul's extra oh, it's a total shot at uh, Jordan. On you. And oh. saying that, yeah, of course he has six championships you because to, look how easy his path maybe not comfortable. he made it look easy. Yeah. Because he made it look easy. And now Lindsay Someone had to shoot over Elo. Foul. Someone had to shoot over <laughs> Brian Russell. Left field. Uh, you know, he was, if he's thinking he's shoved off or not. Florida takes Somebody eight, had to rip seven, out my heart and show fourth, it to me pumping every single time he went into Madison Square that. Garden, whether he wore 23 or whatever but the again, hell he wore. it goes back to what you said. That's why you got to put came these back, in these position now. 45? What was he wearing? this happen yeah, now in February. Yeah, right. Then he went 55. He went 55. With a system to Bill Wennington. What she needs to do. LeBron never ripped out my heart and showed it to me pumping like Jordan. The reason why Jordan and I know it's something that had think, it easier okay, well, is because Jordan it made it look easier. Like, what does that mean? Like, I, I think Jordan, also Jordan beat Magic, Jordan beat Drexler, Jordan beat Malone and Stockton. I mean, oh, Jordan prevented a lot of Hall of Famers from getting any rest whatsoever. But the people who LeBron's playing against, I mean, to count to Lindsay, are they any of the guys that we I just mentioned? That's I mean, first. I don't, uh, no, the people got the first to get yeah, people got the in, in LeBron's era. None of them got him. Yeah. Mike, the thing advanced, that the kind of Rich Paul, third, I think, is saying is that didn't have a Pippen. No, is that people like look at Kevin Durant going to the Warriors? Longley, like had a big they're trying to, to the even though you know you started the super team, bro. Like. People are trying to Sarah form Longley super teams single. just to beat LeBron. Uh, okay. That's kind of what it's called. And now, well, here's, two here's one thing I will give it. LeBron's had a tougher than Michael Jordan is uh, two Twitter. Tonight. Second and third. And, 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 yeah, yeah. and people being able to tell you what you think about you right there in the palm of your hand. 24-7, 365 shows and what have you that didn't really exist back in the day. Yo, also, LeBron's had this type of pressure on him since he was 16 years old. That's all I know. No one in the history of sports. Jordan made it look easy because... 
It's hard he got it to easier because he made it look that easy. Offense, Come defense, on, defense. Come on, Come on, and pitching. All right, one more NBA. He just one has one so many hours to work forever. with. And he talks one more about NBA, that and then we'll it's take a break because I got two NFL. You try to be the best you do the best you can, but there are going to be certain areas of the game. Maybe you're not as strong, especially early in the season. I think it's what's tough, too, is someone like Coach Tim Walton. I think it's something. I think it's something. I think so it's absolutely that something. Why wouldn't reps. Zion the in the reach out to CJ McCollum? If you're, prepared, right? if you're the leader you're of this team and you're the future of this team, and somebody of CJ McCollum's right, caliber, not so just on the court, but the week, moral fiber off of it, and leadership and veteran, like this is a guy who's also involved in union material. Like this is a this is a lead pipe wielding professional veteran basketball player and human. You don't reach out and say, "All right, man, welcome. We're going to start to dominate when I get back." I know that. No, I know that. Like, feeling, don't you do that? When you put me on the show, Mike and Chris, they never texted me to welcome oh. me. Oh, yeah, oh they it's through the count. Yeah. Ooh, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Mike didn't even want me sitting don't over you here. Think well, well, actually, I wanted you to get out of the jam. <laughs> Like, if you're, it's it's long, it makes it seem like he just doesn't plan on being. Side for a ball. Well, well we all know count. he doesn't play. I know. Well, yeah. Yeah. so yeah, I think it's something. I mean, he's played 55 also games. Also said, you know, you can practice like all you want, but you repetition I mean, live action. For the you can't so I'm not can't sure how. Hey man, you know, the bridges got burned but already. But. If you want, if you feel like this is your team and your organization and your city and a your program and, and you're that guy count, and you're out and, third, two out and somebody's being brought in of his caliber and nature, got her. And Woodall you don't gets reach out to him. Out yeah. of Longley That's a big help to for you. The or if he does reach out the to Gators you, the Gators regain the lead. Something. They get a run, aided by two yeah, CFAs, and at the end right. of three and a half, how's that for second team? Here's a sold-out complex. It's number one. And then the UCF indoor track team, they won the American Conference Championship. That's a pretty good day for your athletic department. Is that all this there? weekend? Yeah. Wow. Yesterday. What a busy Saturday. Yeah. The 1-0. That was after the walk-off for softball on Friday. Friday night was a pretty good night. Jane and Doherty, the walk-off against Ole Miss. And here we are tonight. This marquee matchup in-state rivalry here, bottom of the fourth. 8-7 lead for Florida. Schopacher ahead 2-0. She singled in the first and flew out in the second. Derek Lopez alongside three-time All-American, Francesca Nash. She's played in a few of these matchups. But not a game like this. It's <laughs> been a roller coaster. Back and forth. Schopacher fouls it off, and it's 2-2. Two two. Facing Riley Trilicek. She'll be followed by Griffin and Volpe. 5-6-7 for the Knights here in the fourth. The 2-2, Schopacher hits it to the right side. That's a foul ball. Cal remains 2-2 two two to Schopacher, the senior. Who, of course, is familiar with some of the Gators, friends with the Gels sisters. They were playing travel ball teammates. They won a ch national championship together with the Tampa Mustangs. TJ Gels, their head coach, played at Lakewood High School. And they appeal there in a no swing. And they had a sarcastic crowd for ch ch applause from the black and gold faithful. Not happy over the Doherty call in the last inning. The payoff pitch. Schopacher hits it to first. This one, it is a fair ball, and Wallace has it. He'll touch the bag at first for the first out here in the fourth. You can't forget that Skyler Wallace played shortstop at Alabama before she transferred over to Florida. Then she found herself trying to find a spot here on a tough Gator defense, and first base was what they had, and she was like, I'll take it. You know, she had to sit out last year. And, you know, you saw her last year having to sit out because of that in-conference transfer rule. She was the loudest player in the dugout. And Ashley Griffin now at the plate, fouls it off to third. First moving to first base where Kendall Lindemann was her home there for a couple of years. She's now part of the staff on Florida. As is former Knight Cassidy Brewer. 
who's in her second year there. Played here at UCF from 2016 to 2019. As Griffin rips one into right field, that will drop in for a hit, and it gets past Kistler. Griffin will round first, and will go into second standing, and is in scoring position with one out here in the fourth. Well, Ashley Griffin is really turning it on as of lately, finding her swing as a young freshman, as the right fielder, Kistler, just cannot keep this ball in front of her. You know, we saw a play like that on Friday night happen against UCF, and then that situation, as an outfielder, you have to decide, do I break down and keep the ball in front of me? Meaning, do I stop running full speed? So in that way, it blocks it, and I can keep it in front of me to not allow that runner to get to second. Or do you leave your feet and dive? In that situation, Kistler didn't want to dive because the ball was spinning away from her, but she at least needed to try to keep, keep it cleanly. They're going to pinch run for Griffin. Very fitting. Just talking about Brewer, who was really a great catcher. Played, moved from second base to catching. And now Griffin with the big hit there. It's a double. And Avery Wong will pinch run at second base. With Elise Volpe to hit. Volpe two for two tonight. She's had a good weekend. Takes a strike. She doubled back in the second and singled up the middle in the third. Hitting up to 333 on the year. The 0-1. Volpe slices. Fair ball down the line at third base. Ball Malone will send Wong. The throw home is not handled. And we're tied at eight. An RBI hit for Volpe who goes all the way to third. Well, Elise Volpe, have yourself a day getting her third hit. She started the rallies in the last two innings, and this time she joins in on the RBI, R RBI fun. And this was going to be a close play at home play. You might have thought that they were going to get Wong out at home if the catcher, Wilkie, can catch the ball. And she just tried to tag too soon without securing it. And again, ties this ball game up. Katie Birch at the plate with a runner at third and one out, takes ball one. First of all, a heck of a throw by Falby. That was dead on. You're right, I think if Wilkie holds on to that, that's an out, but she didn't, and that's the aggressive base running. Again, putting your defense on their heels, and UCF again responds, and we're tied at eight. And that's a strike, one and one, and because of that, we're gonna be guaranteed this will end up being the highest scoring UCF Florida game in the history of this rivalry. It's 30 games old, over 20 years of games. <laughs> one, one pitch, a squeeze attempt there by Birch. We Volpe at third. I think the biggest thing I, I look at, though, when I see Volpe get that hit is the last two times Volpe got her singles was for miss defensive positioning, still trying to play her too much like a slapper. And I understand that you have a runner in scoring position, so you are tending to crash. And speaking of crashing, that ball is hit to center over the head of Lindsay. Volpe is going to score. It's an RBI double for Katie Birch, and the Knights regain the lead. They take a 9-8 lead. Well, if you're wondering why the camera's shaking, it is because these fans are excited that UCF takes this lead with this huge double, as you're gonna see Volpe jumping up and down, cheering for her teammate that just allowed them to take the lead. Katie Birch, two hits, big night for her. And this crowd is bouncing. They have they call the bounce house across the street at football. They're bouncing here as a netball nearly goes to the backstop with Macario at the plate. Good play by Wilkie there. Runner at second, still only one out. And what did we say earlier in the game? It was a 7-2 Florida, and we do not count the Knights out, and you see why. The 1-0. It's low. This is now officially the highest scoring Florida UCF game in history. <laughs> and it's far from over. So you're part of history, Francesca. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. The 2-0.
It's all me just up here talking softball. <laughs> Not the amazing players out there or UCF. I mean, they they just they 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 just don't ever want to get out. No. They never do. And, and you have to credit them. You have to credit that type of mentality of no way. I don't even care if you put seven runs in one inning. I can come back. That's a strike. It's three and one. I mean, you really look at it. Riley Trilicek has struggled trying to get ahead of batters, trying to command the zone. And UCF is patient, has been getting a lot of walks, has been capitalizing on missed pitches down the middle, putting some great swings on good pitches, too. The 3-1 is in there for a strike. It's 3-2 to Macario, who's walked in the second, grounded out in the third. Back and forth we go. UCF in Florida. The payoff pitch. It's got her. Big strikeout for Trilicek to get Macario, the freshman, for the second out here in the fourth. So much is happening in this game. It's crazy to think this is just the second out, but this is what Riley Trilicek is hoping to do more often, get swings and misses off that drop ball. Rowe at the plate. Went around there, Owen won the count. Rowe has walked three times in this game. Walked in the first, walked in the second, walked in the third. You still got Birch at second, and that's fouled away, Owen to the count. Now Riley Trilicek trying to get out of this game with no more damage. Keep it a one-run game. And the way this game's going, I mean, that'll be certainly important. It's the 0-2. She gets Rowe in a chopper. Walsh deep in the hole. Throw to first. Not in time. Rowe beats it out. Heck of a play by Walsh, but even a heck of a play by Rowe to beat it out. I mean, as a lefty slapper, that's a perfectly placed slap. You're trying to get that high hop. You're trying to take that shortstop's momentum away as you see her just speeding down that first base line. I think the biggest thing I ask myself, though, is why didn't Walsh just try to tag the runner right in front of her? That's the easiest out. No way you're able to get row with that speed. So it is first. In third, here's the replay again. You take game. a look at it. She has her right in front of her. And Rose already at first base. And sets up first and third with two outs. And Searcy takes a strike. Oh, it won the count. Kennedy walked in the first. Fielder's choice in the second. Walked in the third, driving in a run. Birch at third, Rowe at first. There goes the runner. No throw. We've seen that before a few times tonight. It's second and third now in two outs. Yeah, and in that situation, there's no throw because the ball was in the dirt. Catcher Wilkie had to keep it in front of her. You know, when Rowe, jo Joisha Rowe was up, we said that she'd walk three times. And I took a look at the line, and Florida pitching has already walked six batters in this game. That ball's hit to left, goes foul. And typically when you see, you know, three walks, four walks, you kind of go, okay, that's not ideal. But when you say six, you just know your pitchers are, are not commanding. Their, their first pitch isn't working. Their second pitch isn't working. You, you ask yourself, what is working? And UCF has been showing so much patience and has been able to get those big hits, timely hits. And that's why we see this score so well. Searcy gets a piece of it to stay alive, one and two. See Katie Birch at the big double to drive in the go-ahead run scoring Volpe in this inning. She's at third, Rowe is at second. How about some of the players stepping up in this game? Some of the unheralded names. As Searcy hits a grounder to Walsh. Walsh is there, will throw to first, a little high, and they're gonna say, no, she's off the bag. They say Wallace is off the bag. Searcy is safe. Birch scores, and UCF extends the lead to 10 to 8. 
Yeah, all you have to do is put the ball in play and make them make the easy plays. And Walsh did not have a good grip on this ball. She was trying to rush her throw, did not have a good grip, so it takes first baseman Wallace off the bag and allows UCF to score yet another run. We're going to see a pitching change. What a wild night this has been so far here. Knights have scored three in the bottom of the fourth. They have scored 10 runs in this game. It's the most runs UCF has ever scored against Florida. It's the most runs Florida has given up in a regular season game in multiple years. And it ain't far from over. We're only halfway through. We'll tell you more about the new Gator pitcher when we return. Knights up 10-8. Johnson finds Green looking for space for the win! Darren Green drills it at the buzzer! UCF win! One and two. Short 30, hit with a deep center! It's gone! Deja vu! Shannon Doherty flips the script and does it again! A walk-off three-run homer! And the Knights defeat the Ole Miss Rebels! Six to three! And of course, Saturday, historic day at the arena here across the street is Coach Abe and UCF women's basketball wrapping up the American Conference regular season title. They blew out Cincinnati, of course, ranked 25th in the polls. First time ever they've been ranked in the top 25. Mossini Kaba, Diamond Battles and company is UCF, the regular season champions. Here, got a heavyweight fight here. They're in the bottom of the fourth, a 10-8 lead for UCF. And you see Shannon Doherty on deck. But Jada Cody will come to the plate, and she's going to face a new Gator pitcher. Yeah, this is Marissa Messimore. She's a transfer from FGCU. We saw her throw a few innings in the opening weekend for Florida, threw some innings yesterday as well, and a few batters earlier today. She faces Cody. First pitch to strike to Cody. Messimore's former teammate at Florida Gulf Coast, Janisha Rowe, is at third, with Kennedy Searcy at first. Cody singled, had a two RBI single back in the third inning. There goes the runner. Searcy, they do throw, but it's cut off by Adams. It's a steal for Searcy, and it's second and third. So we're just seeing all the different types of options you have on a first and third play in this game. That's one option. So far, we've seen the catcher hold it, pick off to third. And then that one, you have the second baseman cutting off in case the runner's going to go. Cody hits it to third. Eccles will throw to first to end the inning, but not before the Knights score three runs in the inning. An RBI hit by Volpe, the RBI hit by Katie Birch, and the Knights lead number four, Florida, 10 to eight through four. Huh, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more in car insurance. Everybody knows that. Well, did you know that former pro football player Icky Woods will celebrate almost anything? 44. Woo, 44, that's me! Get some cold cuts, Geico. Some cold cuts. Get some Make an entrance in reverse. The Audi Q5 Sportback. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. Hey, cover girls. Introducing new exhibitionist stretch and strengthen mascara. Stretch your lashes to new heights. Experience up to 60% longer looking lashes. Exhibitionist stretch and strengthen mascara. Get yours today from easy, breezy, beautiful cover. Together forever, we never to part. Top of the fifth here in Orlando. Let's go down to our third member of our team, Jade Barquette. Eric, you mentioned Amanda Lorenz earlier. She is the current volunteer coach for the Gators and a former Gator herself. The four-time All-American brings so much to Coach Walton's coaching staff. Um, knowledge of the game on both sides of the ball and leadership roles that the girls look up to her. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much, Jade. And, of course, Amanda Lorenz. Coach Walton, excited to have her on the staff. Arguably 
the greatest player, all-around player in Florida softball history. I'm not going to, you know, we're not going to start that debate here. But she's obviously has had a great pro career and now is going to be a part of the U.S. national team this year in 2022 for the first time. She was super excited about that when I talked to her when the, they named the team. I mean, someone like Amanda Lorenz is, she's just hands down one of the best players to be playing the sport of softball. And the thing that sticks out the most with her is not just how talented she is, not just how clutch she was as a player, passionate, but competitive. I mean, this girl is the most competitive person I think I've ever met. I'll still talk to her and bring something up and she'll get so mad at me. Like the other day, I, I said, oh, this game's going extremely long on Friday night. Almost like the, or not as long as the game against uh, OU in the national championship though, when she was got Ooh. mad that I brought oh, that up. Yeah. I was like, oh, too soon? Yeah. It's been like five years. <laughs> Never too, that's yeah. always gonna be too soon, I have a feeling. 0-1 that counts Emily Wilkie, who hits it right back to Woodall. Woodall will throw to first in time to get Wilkie for the first out in the fifth inning. You know, Wilkie trying to help herself out with the mistakes that she made in that last game, but this is going to be a nice, easy out that Woodall needs. You know, she's had some long innings in this game, and of course, Cindy Ball Malone knows that she is the workhorse, that she can stay through it, but it's nice if you can have those one, two, three innings as well. It's been very rare in this game. Kate Kissler at the plate, and of course, Coach Ball Malone calls the pitches. The big question here from UCS standpoint is, how do you get some outs here without, you know, gets this Florida offense? Up two here, 10 to eight. Woodall re-entering the game after starting. Volpe came in between. Who can get put up some zeros? Only There's only been one zero, a couple of zeros put up in this game. That was for Florida in the first and in the third inning. And you wonder what's going through Coach Ball Malone's mind right now. I, mean, I was just mentioning how competitive Amanda Lorenz is. I mean, Coach Cindy Ball Malone is just as competitive. The 2-0 is in there for a strike. And I really think that's something that, you know, Bears brought over, Coach Cindy's brought over, is instilling that type of competitiveness where you just say, like, dig in and want it. Who cares if you're going up against, you know, the number two team, the number four team? Just own it. You love this sport. Win it. And when you, when you go up against any type of team that has that swag, that has that mentality, they are hard to beat. And you're seeing that with UCF. Speaking of competitive, Tim Walton, very competitive. Both these coaches are as the 3-1 is hit to first off Doherty's glove. And she'll have no play there as Kistler gets on with one out. And that's really the only play that UCF has on that. If Doherty does not try to lay out to snag that, that's going to be an easy single. But still getting enough on it shows the athleticism that that first baseman has. Kendra Falby will come to the plate. I mentioned Tim Walt was very emotional there at the end of the inning. They're talking to his players, trying to fire him up there after kind of facing some of that adversity in the bottom half of the inning. Someone like Coach Wallen, he's a perfectionist. The way he prepares is, is straight up perfection. And that trickles down to how his, how his players prepare. So he holds them to a high standard, a high caliber. And if he feels like they're not matching that, not meeting it, he lets you know. Both him and Coach Ball Malone can be very passionate on the field. They're competitive off the field. They're down to earth. Good family people. Tim's a great father. Sydney, obviously, a great mom. You know, I was talking to Coach Wall. He's like, you know, Sydney and her husband, Bobby, they're great people. And this is like, down to earth, down to earth. But when it gets to the game, it's like the player in them comes in there. They bring that intensity and they want their players to feed off that, have that passion. As Falby's ahead here, two and one. Falby hit a three run homer way back in the second inning. That was a while ago. And you can see their defense has made their adjustments off of Falby. In her first at bat, they were playing her so in, like you normally would a slapper. But now they've backed up because that home run. And she's ahead of the count here, three and one. So typically when you, as a defense, are going up against a slapper, you pull that left fielder in tight. The center fielder shifts to cover that left center field gap, comes up a little bit too towards the dirt, and right field plays straight up. That's your typical defense for a slapper. That's it, foul. 
Yeah, and this and when she got this home run in the second inning, she got a pitch that was elevated. So allowing this pitch to really travel even more, but that was just her second home run of the season. And so yeah, you look at that batting average, 514, you think, okay, prototypical lefty slapper, but no, she's got the power. She's a five-tool player. There's not anything she can't do on the field. It is a 3-2. That's fouled off. I mean, this is the first time I've seen her in person. I've been impressed over the weekend. She's great arm in the outfield, can hit for power. I, I, I've heard about the speed. I've been hearing about it from your fellow colleagues over there. But uh, I, I was, did not know about the power in the defense, honestly, until this week, seeing her in person live. It's crazy about the speed. You really have to see it in person just to see how fast she is. The 3-2. Well, she taps one to first. Doherty, there's the example right there. You called it as she couldn't get Falby. She just raced through the first base side there. I know, it's like Falby heard me, when, wanted to say, okay, I'll show you how fast I am. I mean, this is a pitch that she pulls up this first base line and you have to play it slow as a first baseman because it has a lot of hop on it. And look at her going right down through the line. Doherty fields it at the same time Falby is passing her. Just a blur. How is she not on the track team? <laughs> First pitch is fouled off. They play at the same time. That's probably why. That's true. Hannah Adams at the plate. It would be work something out there. Man, that is unbelievable. Uh, Adams grounded out to short in first, lined out in the second, single to fourth. I've never seen somebody run that way. You made, you made a great description there. I mean, Doherty was there. There was nothing Doherty could do there, right? She handled that as well as you can. I mean, because it had so much bounce on it, you have to play it surely. And by the time she picked it up, Falby was going by her. Well, that's going to be it for Woodall as Coach Paul Malone's going to go to the bullpen here. We'll tell you about the new Knights pitcher. When we return, we're in the top of the fifth. UCF 10, Florida 8, but the Gators threatening. You get a medium fries and a medium soft drink for free when you buy a McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich in the app, and it'll even arrive encased in a buttered bun and wrapped in silver. Like a crispy, juicy, tender present. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. PGA Junior League is a fun team golf experience for kids that the entire family can enjoy. Boys and girls learn the game from PJ and LPGA professionals and have a great time with friends. Find your team and get ready for a fun and exciting PGA Junior League season. No high fives for me, but it's out. Come on. I want to see you out playing in your jersey and having fun. Visit, Visit PGAJuniorLeague.com. Is it going to be your time or someone else's? It's time to decide. There you see Kamal Woodall, her night is done, goes three and two thirds, had a battle against Florida, and now the new Knights pitcher, Gianna Mancha. I mean, we called it early on in this game that this game was going to come down to the bullpen. And of course, we're going to see the ace for UCF in Gianna Mancha. And I love the way that Woodall and Mancha complement each other. Woodall primarily down, will throw that change up every now and then. But Mancha, she can throw at three different speeds. Her rise ball comes in with such spin to where sometimes it looks like it's an off speed, but really has like that tight movement that creates a lot of swings and misses. And her fastball, she can just spot right below the knees and hums in around 67 miles per hour. We wondered if Coach Ball Malone would call her number, and she does right here with a two-run lead in the fifth. But the Gators have two on, one out. As Hannah Adams at the plate. And I don't think it's because Kama Woodall was getting hit. I think it goes back to what Cindy Ball Malone tries to do the most, and that is to slow that momentum down, to slow the pace down. And I feel like she felt Florida was starting to pick that up. And so the best way that she knew to try to fight that was to make a quick pitching change and try to get the Gators off balance. Yeah, kind of inherited the count. Now it's two and one to Adams. Of course, Mancha's very familiar with Florida. Started the game last year here, took a no decision. And comes in here in relief in a two-run game. 
That's a strike. And you mentioned it, and Coach Paul Malone has talked about it. Woodall and Macho, they're so different that it's really an adjustment for the hitters, right? You're going from one style to a completely different style. Exactly. Like, in one aspect, you're focused down, trying to get your barrel underneath it. But now against Mancha, you really need to let that ball travel and see where it's going to spot. 2-2 two -two is away, and it's full. 3-2. and two. Kissler at second. She singled in this city, and then Falby, who singled at first. Both infield hits. Payoff pitch. And Adams fouls it off. Both bullpens up right now. It's been that kind of night. Just trying to find outs right now. You feel like both staffs are just trying to find some outs against this, these offenses. The 3-2. And it gets fouled off. And it's hard to do when you got players like Adams who has transformed into a great offensive player, Francesca. He was a great defensive player all the time coming in, but their offense has come on the last couple of years. Yeah, her first two years within Florida, she was that batter who hit like right below 300. You know, her freshman year didn't make a single error at second base. But last year, her team needed her the most with the departure of Lorenz and needed some power. And she lines one to short off Macario's glove and into center field. Walton will send Kistler. She will score. And it's 10-9 to as Adams drives in the run. But Adams just ropes this ball right up the middle, and it almost hits her teammate, Kissler, as she's taking her lead from second base. Kissler kind of gets caught in no man's land, and imagine if the shortstop, Macario, makes that diving catch. As you can see, Macario just misses this and misses Kissler getting hit, but able to still stay athletic enough to score this run for Florida. And Skyler Wallace to the plate. First and third, one out. First and third. I feel like I've said that a few times tonight. Five. Four five, or five times, yeah. yeah. By the way, i got to defend these defensive defensive players. Are there, these balls are getting hit hard. These players are super fast. I mean. Are you saying I'm being too hard on them, that they need to make plays? I'm I tend just, to do that. I, I mean, do that, tend to do that. I mean, that ball was smoked <laughs> by Adams there. I mean, as the 0-1. And Wallace takes low ball one, one and one the count. Falby at third, Adams at first. A 10-9 game, Knights with a lead, but Florida threatening here. Back and forth. No lead is safe. The one, one. Wallace takes up high, two and one. And it really could come down to which team, which staff can find that arm that can just put get some outs. It's so, which is so bizarre to say about a UCF Florida game. With all respect to all the great hitters we've had with both programs over the years, it's usually been a pitching dominated series. You see UCF really wanting this pitch to be called a strike. It's a ball, but it's one of those pitches that you're hoping the batter is going to swing at. Excellent framing, though, from the freshman catcher behind there. 3-1. The strike, and it's full. 3-2. and two. <laughs> Payoff pitch. Fouled off. Adams was going on that pitch. I think the one thing that we've seen consistently with these UCF pitchers that when they're facing Florida lefties, they just live on the outside part of the plate. Actually just see the adjustment from Skylar Wallace taking an extra step closer with that back foot to crowd that, that box. The 3-2 to get and fouled it off. And again, that's one of these two teams just know how to foul pitches off, stay alive, and just make the pitchers work. Especially, you know, as a batter, when you're just getting pitched one-sided, and especially outside, you tend to lean forward just a little bit too much, and that gets you out of this, it gets you into an unathletic position. 
So sometimes you see a lot of foul balls, but it's because they're reaching. And she loses Wallace as Wallace walks, and the bases are loaded with one out. And Charla Eccles will come to the plate. You see here Eccles in the second inning with the two-run homer. Yeah, Charla Eccles, All-American from Florida last year, has the ability to change the game with just one swing. We talk so much about being competitive. She's an extremely competitive player, someone who holds herself to a very high standard. Now they're going to make a catching change here. So with Monja in the game, they're going to take out Griffin, and they're going to insert Cody into catch. So Cody's going to move from third to catch. Cody's kind of become quite, kind of that de facto catcher for the pitcher. And she will probably catch here. And now the question will be, who do they bring in at third base? So now you got a defensive change here. A 10-9 lead for UCF. We're only in the fifth. Eric Lopez alongside three-time All-American Francesca Inea. In case you're just joining us, where have you been? Uh, <laughs> seriously. This game started about an hour later than scheduled. It's 5.06. UCF jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first inning. Florida scored seven in the second to take a 7-2 lead. Knights responded with two in the third and then three in the fourth to tie it up at seven. And then Florida got it a run. UCF took a 10-8 lead, but Florida has scored here. And that's you see the scoreboard right there, which is getting a workout right now, I tell you. Searcy's at third base now. And the first pitch from Mancha is a ball, 1-0 the count to Eccles. That was a good one, Eric. I, I, don't, I think it's, you know, I'm not supposed to as the color of her cackle like that on air, but you made me cackle. Well, there you go. It's <laughs> a little bit of first a lot here yes, tonight. a lot of first. A lot of first. The 1-0. Eccles takes a strike, and it's 1-1 one and one to Eccles. She flew out in the first, hit that two-run homer we showed you in the second, and walked in the fourth. Hitting here with the bases loaded and one out. Falby at third, Adams at second, Wallace at first. Mancha in relief on the 1-1. Low, ball two. Two one pitch, and that's low. And now Monch in danger of walking in the tying run. Three one. That's high ball four and a walk, and we're tied at ten. Well, we talk about the patience that both of these offensive have had tonight. And in a moment like that, where you're down a run, you know you can hit any, you feel like you can hit anything, but to have that type of patience to lay off of those pitches is tough. And Reagan Walsh will come to the plate. Base is still loaded. And she takes ball one. What number did you wear at Florida? What was your jersey number? Number 10. Did you know that? Is that why you asked? Okay. I, we got we got 10, 10. You wore number 10. I feel I think these two teams are this is your birthday gift right here. Your birthday's tomorrow. Both teams have decided to score 10 runs in your honor. Well, I hope someone scores at least one more. Well, somebody has to. Yeah. So that that <laughs> to uh, one one to count. 10 10. A f I can't believe I'm saying that. With a 1-1 count here to Reagan Walsh. And that's fouled into the net. And it's one and two. There you see here at the UCF softball complex, sold out crowd in Orlando, Florida. Number four, Florida and UCF, 30th meeting all time. The highest scoring Matin game ever between these two teams. Eric Lopez alongside. Three-time All-American Francesca Ney, award number 10. We just re revealed that. All tied at 10 here. One, two. 
Goes inside, ball two. There you see Hannah Adams at third base. There you see the matchup. Mancha against the freshman Reagan Walsh. The 2-2. Two -two. Got her. Strikeout from the senior Mancha as she gets Walsh for the second out of the inning. And this is why Gianna Mancha can be just so good. She primarily stayed low with that fastball, spotting it inside on the knees. And then she brings it up. And as a hitter, you think, here it comes. This is the one I'm about to smash. And you swing and miss it. Big strikeout. We haven't had many of those in this game from either side. Both teams have done a heck of a job putting the ball in play. There's Cheyenne Lindsay at the plate. And she swings at the first pitch. Hits a pop-up. Rowe lost it in the light, but makes the catch anyway. The stumble there, but makes the catch to end the inning. But the Gators come back and score two to tie the game up at 10. We head to the bottom of the fifth. All tied at 10. USAA is made for the safe pilots. For Mac, who can come to a stop with barely a bobble. Lucia, who announces her intentions even if no one's there. And Sergeant Moore, who leaves room for her room. With USAA Safe Pilot, when you drive safe, you can save up to 30% on your auto insurance. Get a quote and start saving. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. We are no etiquette experts, but biting into your McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich and ending up with a whole pickle slice dangling from your mouth isn't impolite. It's human. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Make an entrance in reverse. The Audi Q5 Sportback. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. UCF celebrating 20 years of softball. You see Stephanie Betts, UCF Athletic Hall of Famer, the original night. 20 for 20 series for UCF. For more information, check out UCFnights.com. Stephanie Betts, the first ever recruit to commit to UCF softball. When this program started, their first year in 2002. That was a good, that's a good player to start with in a franchise, right? A program there, Stephanie Best, Hall of Famer. Someone who continues to give back to the sport as well here locally in Orlando. Just produces so much talent that goes through her facility. Works over at Pro Swings, right? Her company still holds on a lot of significant offensive records here at UCF. Was the first softball player to be inducted into the UCF Athletics Hall of Fame. Helped UCF win the 2005 ASUN Championship and the tournament. And Shannon Doherty rips one into left field for a base hit. She's rounding first. Falby throws to second, is not in time. It's a leadoff double for Shannon Doherty, who continues to kill Gator pitching. I mean, there's really nothing that Shannon Doherty can't do. Even in the win yesterday that they had against the Dukes, they were able to come through with a sack fly from her. So she's able to come up big with the home runs, can find out the situational hitting, but then can also lead off an inning and get her team in scoring position right away in this tie ball game. She's now three for four tonight as Schopacher takes a ball. One and oh the count. For her career, she's seven for ten now against Florida pitching. I mean, she's a player that deserves, you know, a little bit more recognition, I would say, nationally, not just because. Schopacher tried to bunt. Did it hit her? Florida's going to claim it hit her in fair territory. Now both, both sides are arguing. We can take a look here. If it hits her in fair territory, she's automatically out. It does look close. 
I still say it's a little questionable, but it looks like and they just called, gonna call it out. They called her out, and Coach Ball Malone's not happy right now. Arguing about, because the home plate umpire did not make the call. He went over to first base, and then the umpires discussed, and the Knights dugout is livid. That was, boy. Both coaches have been, uh, I would say, have been a little fired up tonight. This is a high emotional yeah. game right now, for sure. So you can take another look at this. It's kind of hard to see from that angle because you cannot actually see the ball touching her. But this would be our best bet here. Again, it cannot touch her in fair territory. And it does look like it might be just coming right up against that leg. That is a huge call and a huge out because Doherty stays at second with Griffin. Hitting here with an 0-1 count against Messimore. And that's low for a ball. Obviously, Schopenhauer trying to drag the butt, maybe advance the runner to third, but it did not work at all. There's Griffin. Grounded into a double play in the first, flew out in the third, double in the fourth. Takes two and one. In a game like this, you'll take outs any way you can. Yeah, when your pitchers are struggling to make strikes and struggling to command, you will take outs any way that they come. I mean, the biggest thing you have to do as a pitcher, though, is just try to get it in that area and trust your defense behind you. Especially for Florida, one of the top defenses in the nation consistently. Let your defense help you out. Three balls and a strike to Griffin. Doherty at second. She doubled the lead off this inning. As Griffin takes the strike, it's three and two. One of the rare times tonight where both bullpens right now are quiet. Three, two. That's low ball four and a walk to Griffin. Two on, one out here in the fifth. And someone like Marissa Messimore, she just transferred over from FGCU. But you know, you have to understand your lineup and how it's made up and completed when you're going to face them. You know, you're going up against a freshman in Ashley Griffin. She's batting 160. That's when you need to feel confident to throw those pitches and try to get that out. Elise Volpe at the plate takes the first pitch strike. 0-1 the count. Volpe doubled in the second, singled in the third, and then drove in a run with a double in the fourth. Two on, one out with Volpe at the plate. And Messi Moore with the 0 1. That is hit foul out of play. And quickly, Messi Moore ahead 0 2 on Volpe. Of course, you see a face Messi Moore in Florida Gulf Coast last year to start the year in Fort Myers. So there is some familiarity there as well. It's the 0 2. Oh, she got Volpe there to chase out of the strike zone. A big strikeout for Messi Moore for out number two. And this is a pitch that Messi Moore wants to throw more of. This is her changeup. She kind of holds it like a knuckleball, but she cannot throw it unless she's able to get ahead of batters just like she did for Volpe. So that'll bring up Katie Birch, who singled in the third and doubled an RBI in the fourth. Came in for Molina. It takes ball one. Ten runs, 11 hits, one air for Florida. Ten runs, 13 hits, three airs for UCF. You're in the bottom of the fifth. For 1-0. The strike, one and one. There's a lot of double digits there on the board, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's an understatement. That scoreboard is... Pretty old, and it's gotten, I don't think it's ever gotten as much work out as it's gotten here tonight. As Birch fouls it off. This is already the highest scoring mat game in the history of this rivalry that goes back to 2003 when they met for the first time. This is the most runs UCF has ever scored against Florida, and Florida has tied the most runs they've ever scored against UCF. One, two. Outside, two and two. Doherty at second, doubled in this inning to lead off. Griffin 
at first walked. As Birch lines it to Adams at second to end the inning. Knight Strand two, we're through five here in Orlando. Number four, Florida 10, UCF 10. We love our new apartment. Great kitchen, open floor plan. But there's not much privacy. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our renters and car insurance easy. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Why is it so funny? A practice spicy crispy chicken sandwich eater knows. Keep one hand on the sandwich and one hand on the drink. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. My name is Daisuke Okamoto. I'm from Japan and I'm making art. With Surface, it's very easy. This pen gives feeling of drawing of paper. I can zoom in and zoom out and I can rotate. You can also take out the keyboard and draw like a tablet. It's not just computer, it's Surface. So I'm excited what I'm gonna do next. Hey, Cover Girls. It's time for a fresh start with new clean, fresh skincare weightless water cream. Supercharged with true clean cactus water for 72 hours of hydration. It works. New clean, fresh skincare from Cover Girl. There you see the Florida schedule after tonight. They'll be got back home. We'll face Southern Miss, Georgia State, Coastal Carolina, Tennessee State in, uh, in that tournament up there. They're coming up at home. And uh, as they continue this season, before you know it, SEC play will get going in a couple of weeks for Florida. It's exciting. Conference is already here, huh? Well, we're almost in March. Can't believe it. Gosh, it always goes by so fast. So we are 10-10 here in the top of the six, Francesco. What, what goes through your mind right now if you're both of these teams here? Is it just, hey, new game here? I mean. Yeah, that's ex that's it exactly. You have to kind of forget what has happened, what has gotten you here, because 10-10 is the same as 0-0. Sarah Longley to lead it off. Longley, Wilkie, and Kissler, the scheduled hitters. 7-8-9 against Gianna Mancha. It's one thing, though, if you have, you know, you have 10 runs up, 11 hits for Gators, 13 for the Knights. But... This game is coming down to close. We're getting close to that seventh inning. So you kind of have to turn it up to another level if you want to be the ones that prevail. The 1-0. And as a pitcher, you almost have to like ignore the score, right? Because that could, that could you know, play with your me mentally, right? Like, oh my, 10-10 and these offenses. I mean, Gianna Mancha just came in though this game last inning. So this is only her second inning of throwing. The 2-0. So you know that she has that stamina. And from a mental perspective, she's a leader out here. You know, she's the veteran. She's someone that stayed here in the offseason to continue to get stronger in the, in the weight room, wanted to have her last season to be her very best. Longley takes all the way, three and one the count. Longley doubled in the second, drove in two runs in the second inning, singled in the third, and then struck out in the fourth. Two for three tonight for Longley. And she swings at a 3-1 and pops it up in the infield. Katie Birch at second, dropped the ball. As Longley reaches, and that'll be an air on Birch. Fourth air of the night for the Knights. We mentioned it coming into this game. UCF had 23 errors on the season. And when it comes to a routine play like that, late in the game, 10-10, you know, you're trying to come away from a win. You've got to make that play. Just leaving too many opportunities open. Wilkie now. To hit here with the runner at first. Show to bunt. Paul inside. Ball one. One and zero. The count. Are the lights a factor 
in a play like that? There's no cloud to nighttime. It's this game starting in the afternoon. Does that play any uh, factor there? She came in for Molina. I don't know if that played or no excuse. She got it. She'll be the first to tell you. She's got to come up with that. There's a th strike. Throw to first as Longley gets back. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely a no excuse kind of a person. There's always going to be elements, right? Whether the sun is really bright or it's a cloudy day with some sun and it's bright, there's always going to be something. And UCF plays under the lights enough times to know how their home ballpark works. The 1-1, one -one, Wilkie tries to get the bunt and does. Cody will throw to first in time to get the out. Longley advances to second on the sacrifice bunt by Wilkie. So I love this sacrifice bunt from Emily Wilkie because there's a reason why it is called a sacrifice. You're sacrificing yourself to get an out to move that runner. Now Tim Wallen's caught in the attention of the home player. There's a couple of cars under the lights that are gonna turn it turn off. And you can see her only job is to get that bunt down and she does not move from home plate until she sees that ball fair. It's not a bunt for a, bunt for a base hit where you're trying to be sneaky and use your speed to go down the line. So sacrifice yourself, stay there until you see it fair, and then you can run. And there you see the lights under the truck. There's a lot of park uh, parking uh, parked out there, but please, Terry, you gotta keep the lights off there. And uh, so we're gonna have a delay. Now they're, they're, they've gotten the message out there pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that those lights are not getting in the batter's eyes. Here's the reason why you look towards dead center. They have that bigger wall that the batter's eye, so they can really try to see the ball from the pitcher's hip. And there see Tim and Coach are laughing about it. A, I, bet, yeah, I bet you was trying to say, like, you did that on purpose, right? <laughs> that was a tactic. <laughs> oh, man. This really shows how you know good of friends that yeah. those two coaches are and how they can still be. They're still, they're still, yeah. look at it, they're still chuckling about it. So whatever Tim said, we really got <laughs> Oh, it's been an interesting night. A little bit of everything in this game. Now Kissler with a runner at second and one out. Takes ball one. Kissler walked in the second, singled in the third, singled in the fifth. What else could happen in this game? Oh, setting it up right there, Eric. What else can happen? To be continued. That's right. <laughs> only here in the six. The 1-0. This 2-0. Two balls and no strikes to count. The Kissler's had a good night, two hits, and a walk. And she hits it up the middle and through, base hit. Walton will hold the runner longly at third, and it's a single for Kissler, and the Gators have something cooking here in the six. The Kissler really starting to own that nine hole position. She gets the start with it tonight. And you're going to see how hard she hits this ball right back up the middle. And this is why Coach Walton does not send Longley all the way home. And it's because it gets hit so hard to the center fielder row. She would have been a dead duck. He also held her because he knows he's at the plate now. Kendra Falby. The freshman walked in the first, hit the three-run homer in the second. Popped out in the third and then singled in the fifth. And there goes the runner. They cut off the throw. As they were worried about Longley at third, and Kissler takes second base. And there we go. We see another first and third play, and another option you have for first and third. This time, the shortstop coming across to cut it off. We've, yeah, we've seen just about we've every scenario, right? I know. We're still waiting to see a, a get caught in a rundown, though. <laughs> Falby hits a fly ball, playable. Rowe at center makes the catch. Tagging from third and scoring the go-ahead run is Longley and Florida takes an 11 to 10 lead here in the six. You know, this is what you work on in practice. When you throw BP on the field, you do a round where it's just called runner at third, situational, score her any way you want. That might seem just like a lazy fly ball or a hard fly ball that's an out, but with a runner at third base, that's a sack fly, giving them the, the lead. Kissler at second, two outs for Adams as Florida regains the lead 11 to 10. 
By the way, that Kessler steal on that first and third play, that's Florida's fourth stolen base of the night. So the, the Gators now have had four straight steal, uh, four steals in a game, what, seven straight games. The 1-0 is Miss Low, ball two, two and 0 the count to Hannah Adams, who grounded out in the first, lined out in the second, singled in the fourth, and then an RBI single in the fifth. Every Gator has a hit in the lineup except Walsh and Wilkie. The 2-0, and a swing and a miss by Adams, and it's 2-1. That's the kind of hack you're looking at 2-0, right? 2-0 as a batter, you're zoned in on one pitch and one pitch only. And if it's near there, swing big at it. Go for it. The worst thing that's going to happen is you miss it, and now you have a strike. The 2-1. That's high, 3-1. If you're wondering, Searcy and Macari are the only ones still in the game that don't have a hit in the game. It's only three players currently in the game that don't have a hit. The 3-1. And that's high, ball four. And a walk to Adams, two on, two outs here in the six. That'll bring up Skyler Wallace to the plate as we've just hit the three-hour mark in this game. As Coach Ball Malone's going to come out here. Here in the sixth inning, Florida has regained the lead 11-10. to 10. Eric Lopez alongside three-time All-American Francesca A. A three-hour game here. Nothing new to us. <laughs> it's going to be our third one of the year. Usually against SEC teams. I don't know if it's coincidence there. But now, Coach, what do you think Coach Paul Malone's talking here? It's trying to regroup her team, settle them down here. Just get an out. The way you're hitting, you've been swinging the bat tonight. Just try to keep it a one-run game. You can come back. Well, you know, we also talk so much about the close relationship that Coach Cindy Ball Malone has with Gianna Mancha. Really looks to her as a second mother. You know, someone that was with her at Boise State, brought her over here to UCF. They just think so alike. And you can tell right, right there in that moment, Coach Malone looked like she was kind of trying to talk to her about a mechanic thing, maybe one little mechanical thing in her step. But you see the smile that she's just trying to really relax her at the same time. That's, that is a, such a key for, for Coach Malone is she's always trying to settle the team down. Their whole mantra this entire season is to slow the game. You're, you see her kind of bring her hands down a lot as you see her have a smile too her team right now and that as an infield when it's a high scoring game like this high pressure your coach comes out to talk to you and you see that looseness on them it makes you feel a little loose too to where you just want to play and have fun Wallace takes ball one Wallace grounded out to short in the first single in the second struck out in the fourth and walked in the fifth The 1-0 pitch. Tight 2-0. I don't think both pitching staffs will be big fans of the some of the strike zone calls uh, tonight, either staff there also. I think the hardest thing, it's been it's just been a little inconsistent. You know, sometimes they're calling it low, sometimes they're calling it high, but then the next time they're not. And that's really the only thing you can ask for, though, is that consistency from both a pitcher and a batter. From a pitcher, you want to know, does he have a high strike zone? Is he going to call it low? But, you know, when it's, you know, flip a coin sometimes, how are you able to throw your best when you're unsure of what the zone is? That is high, and it's three and one. Three and one to count to Wallace with Eccles on deck. Here in the top of the six. Three one pitch. That's in the dirt. Ball four and a walk. And the bases are loaded with two outs. 
Four walks now for Mancha since coming in relief. And Sharla Eccles will come to the plate. The All-American will be play representing Team USA this summer in Birmingham in the World Championships. Will step in. Homered in the second. A two-run homer's walked twice. Driven in three runs tonight. Has a fly out as well. And Coach Ball Malone's going to come out. Let's see if that's going to be it here for G. As the Knights' bullpen was up and running. And that looks like it's going to be it for Gianna. We'll tell you about the new Knights pitcher when we come back here in Orlando, Florida, leading 11 to 10. Hey, I get it. Commitment can be scary, but not when you're saving up to 15% with subscribe and save at Amazon. You get free repeat delivery on your favorite items. And if things don't work out, you can always cancel. Seriously, no one would judge you if you call it off. Okay. Learn all the ways to save with Amazon. Your time or someone else's? See the new pitcher for the Knights, the freshman, Caitlin Felton, fresh off throwing a, a complete game shutout, her first shutout in her career yesterday in the 11 to nothing win against James Madison. It was fantastic. More of their hardest throw, maybe their best stuff to go up and down the zone. Perhaps the future of this program. It's interesting. We've seen the two freshman pitchers tonight in this game, and Lexi Delbray. And now Caitlin Felton, perhaps the future of these respective programs. Yeah, and in that game, you know, talked to Coach Malone. She had said she controlled her controllables, the things that we talk about so much, being able to execute on the things you can't control, which is first pitch strikes, getting ahead of batters. And that has always led to their success. And so with Felton coming in, we're going to have a catching change. Cody will return to third. And uh, we'll have a new catcher in. We, you we started off as a catcher, right? I did, yes, until I tore my ACL. Got booted from that position that I loved so much. Just being able to control the game. I loved framing so much. Blocking balls. Oh, well, hey, what's there up? There we are. Hey, guys. Hope you're enjoying the game. That's three-time All-American Francesca Nea. I'm Eric Lopez in a wild game here, uh, Francesca. This is uh, it's the highest-scoring game in the history of this rivalry, and it's I – mean, it's, it's hard to put into words. It's been a little, we've seen a little bit of everything. Well, I mean, even you and I were texting each other before the game, and I, you know, I just said, "Hey, what's going on?" And you're like, "Nothing." Head in the field, and I just said, "I'm excited." Yeah. Because <laughs> we were. This is a uh, looking into 2021 series with UCF making such statement wins, first in that first game, coming Number back as the Gators took the lead, and then when they came to travel to Gainesville, just an emphasis of seven to nothing. There was it. Their bus broke down. Both the bus broke yeah. down. And Florida, to their credit, picked them up on their bus, but then uh, probably regretted it because UCF then jumped on them with a big first inning and won that one 7 to nothing in Gainesville. It was their first win in Gainesville since 08. They took the two games from Florida. Yeah, so because of those high emotional games last year, I mean, we've been excited to see these yeah. two teams square off since then. And it's not disappointed. It's been a little different than we expected, but it's still been as thrilling. 11 to 10. And it's Felton now with the bases loaded. Welcome to the rivalry, by the way. <laughs> you're in the bases loaded, and you're facing all Ameri uh, you know, an All-American at the plate. Yeah, welcome to your freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> 1-0 and the count to Eccles. As the 1-0 pitch is in there for a strike, it's 1-1. Of course, these two teams have had so many memorable moments, especially in postseason in 08. We mentioned earlier in the regional final in Gainesville. 2005 when Stephanie Best and UCF knocked off Florida, eliminated the Gators in that regional. 
And that was a significant moment for both programs. It was UCF's first ever NCAA tournament game win. And it was Florida's last game with Karen Johns as the head coach. Jeremy Foley in Florida would go on a coaching search and they would hire a man by the name of Tim Walton over from Wichita State. Previously coached at Oklahoma with Patty Gasso. Part of the Gasso staff there, yeah, of course. Former great player, baseball player at Oklahoma. Part of the uh, College World Series national title for the Sooners in 94. One of the few that could say he's won a national title in Omaha and a national title at Oklahoma City. A two-time national champion here with Florida back in 2014 and 15. The 3-1 to Eccles is low and outside. Ball four and a walk as Felton walks in Eccles as Florida extends the lead to 12 to 10. And that's been the theme with every pitcher that's come into this game trying to find that strike zone early on. Yeah, the pitchers really have struggled this entire game. This is the fourth pitcher that we've seen from UCF. Florida's had three on their own, and they just cannot get ahead of batters, just not throwing their best stuff tonight. As Walsh, Reagan Walsh, steps in. The freshman who walked in the second. 0 for 3, 0 for 4 tonight. Still looking for her first hit. Of course, she's not, maybe she's not too, uh, she's familiar with these high scoring games. 12 to 10. And she went around there. Her father, John Walsh, was the starting quarterback at BYU, 93-94. Gives him a lot of credit for helping her get to this point and being a student athlete. She's down in the count 0 and 2 against Felton. Got her. Fryer, who's in the game, will touch home plate smartly to get the force out to end the inning as Felton strikes out Walsh. First of many battles between those two. But the Gators score two and lead 12 to 2 as we head to the bottom of the six. My name is Daisuke Okamoto. I'm from Japan and I'm making art with Surface. Very easy. This pen gives a feeling of drawing of paper. I can zoom in and zoom out, and I can rotate. You can also take out the keyboard and draw like a tablet. It's not just computer, it's surface. So I'm excited what I'm gonna do next. Hutch has more than a thousand wins in her career. This is what it's about, and it's only gonna continue to grow. I couldn't be happier to come back and give back and invest in these girls. This is a historic moment for young girls, young women across the country. Thank you, kids. Here we go. Let's win it. Bottom of the sixth here in Orlando. Let's toss it down to the field to Jade Barquette. Thanks, Eric. This isn't the first time the Knights have faced a tough opponent this year. They've had many tough games and some really good wins. This coming up spring break, they'll be going to California for a tough schedule. Team Fresno State, um, Nebraska, some good matchups, and uh, hopefully they continue to do great the rest of the season. Back up to you, Eric. Thank you, Jade. A challenging schedule, of course, played in Clearwater. And you look at the upcoming schedule for the Knights. They'll play Oakland tomorrow night. And then South Carolina next weekend with alongside Florida Gulf Coast South and uh, in that tournament next weekend. But of course, as Jade mentions, that West Coast trip, UCF will play Fresno State, play Iowa State. They'll play in a big tournament up there. And of course, that'll also mark the re home return of Cindy Ball Malone, an alum of Pacific, All-American, will be back at Pacific facing her old coach, Brian Cozy, for the first time ever in March. So. Schedule keeps harder, and of course, UCF later in the year will host Virginia Tech here. So this is not the last marquee ranked team that's coming to the Plex here. I mean, she scheduled it for, she scheduled this schedule for a reason, trying to make sure she can put her players in tough situations early on, get them to learn this game quickly, but also to figure out who her best players are. As you take a look at the new pitcher for the Gators, Natalie Lugo, senior veteran, 
She pitched in the game earlier today, also pitched yesterday's game. So I think the biggest question is, you know, we haven't even seen Elizabeth Hightower throw at all this weekend. Cariel takes the strike there, you're 0-1. You're right, everybody else is thrown to this point. And it's a big opportunity for Lugo here. It's the 0-1. She's had a busy week. She threw a no-hitter on Wednesday against UNF. That's right. I called that game. Yeah, it's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> you and Natalie Lugo have a long week. I didn't have the no-hitter like she did. That was pretty fabulous in five innings against UNF. There's Macario looking for her first hit, fouls it off. But Lugo, you mentioned, she's had a heavy workload this weekend as a starter, as a reliever. I mean, she's someone throughout her entire career has had a lot of innings for Florida. You know, she throws this amazing changeup, and that was what pit, that was the pitch that what was on on Wednesday was this drop changeup that she's really worked on in the fall. The one two Macario reaches for it, bloops one into left. That's gonna drop in for a hit as Falby dove but couldn't come up with it. And Macario with her first hit. Gets the Knights off to a good start here in the six. Well, because Macario was showing slap earlier in this at bat, you had the shortstop who's let Longley now was playing in. So the ball's going to drop in no man's land, and no one was really taking control of it as well. I'm going to bring up Janisha Rowe to the plate. Regardless of what happens the rest of this game, how about the freshman talent on both sides? Falby, we've talked about, Reagan Walsh. How about Macario at UCF side? I mean, a lot of young talent here. Yeah, and I love Michaela Macario for UCF. Going into this weekend series, batting 200, now up to 300. Nine RBIs this weekend for her. And so much speed. Five for five in stolen bases last weekend in the Clearwater Tournament. You just said that she's starting to not play like a freshman anymore. Lugo throwing strikes and is ahead of Rowe, 0 and 2. There's no action in the Gator bullpen. Right now, this is Natalie Lugo's game. Who, as you mentioned, came in earlier, started earlier against James Madison when they Florida beat JMU. The 0-2 squirts away from Wilkie, and Macario heads up, takes second base. We just talked about the speed that she has, and this is a heads-up play. When you are a base runner, you cannot think, oh, look, ball in the dirt, let me go. It is right from the hand of the pitcher when you see it's going to be ball in the dirt that you take off. And that's outside for a ball. And you really have to give credit to the catcher, Wilkie. This is the fourth pitcher in this game that she has had to adjust and catch. All, pitching, all the pitchers she's had to catch all have different repertoires, different strengths, and you have to adjust to that as the catcher. The 2-2. Two -two. That is hit to right field. That's going, going, going. That's going to go all the way to the wall as it goes over the head of the right fielder. Macario scores, throw to third is out. What a throw by the Gators as they get the out on an incredible throw at third base. Not very often are you gonna come up throwing a dart from left, or excuse me, right field, but this ball just sails over the right fielder Kissler's head and Hannah Adams, a strike from the grass all the way to third, as you see Eccles supply the tag on it. And you see Eccles is pumped up and fired up. That is a huge play, as it's now nobody on one out. It's a 12-11 game, but the tying run is thrown out on a perfect relay and a perfect throw by Adams to get Rowe at third. Wow. Well, you had the right fielder, Kissler, was shifted to the left and was playing in against the slapper row. But Natalie Lugo threw a changeup and it hung too high. And that's why Rowe was able to turn on it where Kissler was not playing. But let's, I mean, we got to write that play down. That could be the, the difference in the game. That is an incredible relay. 
and hustle there, getting Rowe out at third. I don't know how many players can do that as Searcy lines it to first and Wallace makes the catch. And there are two outs here in the six. You see Lugo going again with that changeup that's just hanging too high. You know, I mentioned earlier in this week, she focused a lot on that changeup, having that drop movement on it. And when it has that last minute break, she develops a ton of swing and misses, but she gets into trouble when she hangs that changeup too much. And so now Cody will come to the plate. That takes the strike. And again, that throw by Adams, perfect. I don't know how many second basements can make that throw. And a credit, I mean, just a tremendous play on the relay. And a credit to Kissler for making the perfect throw to Adams. I don't know how many players can make that type of a throw, regardless if you're a second baseman or not. Cody hits it off the end of the bat and pops it up as Eccles makes the catch. The Knights get one, but the Gators preserve the lead with an incredible defensive play. Hannah Adams throwing out Rowe at third base. It's Florida 12-11 through six. Gillette introduces the all-new Gillette Labs with exfoliating bar, a razor designed to give you a quick and easy shave. It combines shaving and gentle exfoliation into one efficient stroke. The bar in the handle removes unseen dirt and debris that gets in the way of the blades, giving you a shave as quick and easy as washing your face, so you can look like you put in an effort, effortlessly. Gillette, the best a man can get. Making friends again, Billy? I like to keep my enemies close. Guys, excuse me. I didn't quite get that. I'm hard of hearing. Oh, hey, don't forget about the tense music, too. Would you say tense? I'd say suspenseful. Aren't they the same thing? Can we move on, guys? Please. Alexa, turn on the subtitles and dim the lights. OK, dimming the lights. Is it going to be your time? Or someone else's. Tomorrow night, UCF Softball will close out this memorable night classic tournament against Oakland here at the UCF Softball Complex. Join us live or tune in to ESPN Plus to support your nights. Are you not entertained? How can you not come out after watching what we've seen here tonight? 12-11 Florida. Here at the top of the seventh, Caitlin Felton in relief. Facing Cheyenne Lindsay, Eric Lopez here alongside Francesca now, who'll be enjoying her birthday tomorrow. I mean, at this rate, who knows? Maybe we'll just her birthday will be here. Whoa, let's calm down a little bit there, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Pump the brakes there. We've said it wouldn't be too terrible to celebrate my birthday with you, though. Thank you. 1-0. That's hit foul down to left field out of play. One and one. By the way, that last play in the sixth inning is going to be virtual, uh, going to be breaking Twitter there. I've had coaches texting me during the half inning. They couldn't believe that play. The amazing execution there by Kissler and then Adams on the throw. Perfect. You have to have a perfect throw to get Rowe out at third. And you say it, right? You say that all the time. It has to be perfect. But, like, it has to be perfect. And that was perfection. Lindsay tries a butt, and it's foul. And it's one and two. Here it is again. You see Kissler quickly gets it to Adams, and she just guns it. She knows. There's Eccles. And I love the reaction from Eccles. We haven't seen a lot of emotions from Florida so far. You typically don't see a lot of emotions for Florida. They're, they have this, you know, we're just here for business kind of a feel. But you need to see more of that from them, especially in games like this. As Felton gets the strikeout of Lindsay. And the freshman just collecting some confidence right here, going with this drop ball, and she's fired up. 
You know, struck out Reagan Walsh in the last inning, now starting this inning off with a K. Sarah Longley at the plate as Felton, the freshman phenom. They're really excited about it. Highly touted, could be the next one for the Knights. He's been working a lot with Aaliyah White, the grad coach. Picking her brain. And I know the staff's excited about Fell. They think she could be the next one in this pipeline of great UCF pitchers over the years. It started with Dottie Cup 20 years ago through Lindsey Enders, Hall of Famer Allison Kime, who got inducted into the Athletics Hall of Fame 2019 here at UCF, Ashley Cole, Mackenzie Otis, Shelby Turnier, and of course, Aaliyah White, just to name a few. And this has got to be valuable experience for Fell, right? You're facing Florida, big crowd. This will definitely make her a better player down the road here. And I think both teams will be a better team for playing this game. And that's what Coach Malone had said. She's like, I put this schedule up because I felt like when we got to the postseason last year, we weren't challenged enough. So I'm challenging them now. Longley fouls that off her foot. It's one and two the count. Longley's got two hits tonight. Yeah, so far, though, with Caitlin Felton coming in, a lot of the swings that you're seeing from Florida look a little broken against Felton. But they cannot, not just square her up, but they can't even see the ball. She hums it in pretty quickly, about 67, 68, and has late movement on it. One, two. Longley grounds the third. As the throw to first in time as Cody makes the play. Two up, two down, here in the seventh. I mean, it's crazy to think, Eric, this could possibly be our first inning. That's one, two, three. That's how crazy this game has been. How's your scorecard, by the way? It's messy. It's a lot that. of different colors. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot. Wilkie at the plate. Fouled it off. 0-1 the count to Wilkie. He struck out in the second, struck out looking in the third, grounded out in the fifth, grounded out in the sixth. The 0-1 from Felton. It's Wilkie lines it foul. Well, didn't even flinch. I think <laughs> not, he's, not even, he's used to having a lot of righty power hitters rope it down that line. Wow. Either that or he's trying to figure out how do I get three more outs <laughs> in the bottom half of the inning. <laughs> oh, and two the count. Got her. What an inning for the freshman Felton. It shows her emotion as she strikes out. Wilkie, two strikeouts in the inning and sends us to the bottom of the seventh. The Knights are down 12 to 11. Shannon Doherty, you know her work. She will lead it off for the Knights when we come back here in the, on ESPN Plus. It may not be music to your ears, but as long as it's music to theirs, bring the volume back to the venue with exclusive ticket access to unmissable events. One of the many reasons you're with Amex Platinum. So I'm going to, right? has more than a thousand wins in her career. This is what it's about, and it's only gonna continue to grow. I couldn't be happier to come back and give back and invest in these girls. This is a historic moment. 
for young girls, young women across the country. Bottom of the seventh, Shannon Doherty will eat it off, and uh, she thinks, knows a thing or two about the dramatics, doesn't she, Francesca? Yeah, this was against Georgia, tie ball game, bottom of the seventh, walk-off home run, bat flip and all, and then this was the other night against Ole Miss, tie ball game, what does she do? She walks it off, and with the bat flip, we like to call her the SEC Slayer. Wow. And she will lead it off here against Natalie Lugo. And takes the first pitch for a ball. 12 runs, 12 hits, one air for Florida. 11 runs, 15 hits, four airs for UCF. Doherty has got three hits tonight, two singles and a double. Three for four tonight, facing Lugo. There's a strike, it's one and one. It was Lugo who Doherty hit a homer off last in last year's game here in Orlando. She'll be followed by Schopacher and then Carson Fryer. The 1-1 is up high, 2-1 now, the count to Doherty. The 2-1, that's low, 3-1. You can see Natalie Lugo is being extremely careful against Doherty. Already thrown three change-ups to her in this sequence. The senior Lugo against Doherty. There's the 3-1. Outside ball four and a leadoff walk to Doherty. And that felt like an unintentional, intentional walk. And I can't blame Florida for that. Doherty has killed Florida pitching in these two years. You don't want her to beat you or, in this case, tie it up. Yeah, I agree with you. You have someone like Shannon Doherty who it, it, her DNA is something that you can't coach, that you can't teach, and you can't try to get out. So get around her and then go up against the next three in the lineup. You know, we see Delaney, Delaney Schopacher haven't had that much success. Katie Birch was, came in for her, was able to have a double. And then Griffin has only had a double today, and then Elise Volpe, though, she's been on fire as well. Well, we're going to have a pinch hitter for Schottpacher. Maddie Bejarano will pinch hit. So the chess is on here. Florida is saying, we dare somebody else not name Shannon Doherty to beat you. So Coach Ball Malone goes to her bench and calls Maddie Bejarano's number. She went a 375 average hit. Her first career home run is a night against Minnesota back on February 11th. And it gets her number called here with Doherty at first. It takes a strike, 0-1. And, and this is just a one-run ball game. So even though this is high scoring and we've kind of seen, seen it all, but for UCF, it's one, one, one run right now. So you have to play situational and you have to execute trying to get a butt down. There is no action in the Gator bullpen. There's no action in the Knights bullpen. This is Natalie Lugo's game. From here on out, it appears. As the 0-1 to Bejarano is up high, ball one. And you wonder what Ball Malone and Whitney Jones, who runs the offense, what they're thinking. You know, they got some options on the bench they like to use, perhaps, to come to the plate, depending on how this inning develops. One and one to count to Bejarano. And she gets the butt down. Lugo hesitated, threw to first, and they just get Bejarano. That was a close play as Lugo kind of took the awkward step there, but made the play. That could have been trouble for Florida. So Lugo thinks Eccles is going to take this ball right away, but Eccles thinks that Lugo is going to have it because it goes right towards her. And just to be able to stay with it enough for Lugo is allows them to get this out. That could have been scary for them. That's an inch away from being first and second and nobody out. And I think Tim Wall ran over there, and I think he wants to make sure the communication was better. It looked like a miscommunication. Like you said, she, Lugo thought Eccles was going to get the ball, and 
fortunately reacted quickly enough. And it's one of those things as a coach when you see that happen where no one's really communicating, someone saying, oh, someone else is going to get that ball. You call timeout and you talk to them to remind them we're hungry, we need to win. This is a high pressure situation and remind them of what's at stake here. Well, welcome to, to Florida UCF, Carson Fryer. She made her first start yesterday against JMU, and now she hits here with a runner at second and one out and swings and fouls it off. Volpe is on deck. You got Doherty at second after the sacrifice from Bejarano. But the battle right now is Lugo against the young freshman Fryer. The 0-1. That's in the dirt. A good block for Wilkie because every pitch in the dirt now is magnified. Wilkie's just been getting worked back there tonight. The fourth pitcher that she's had to catch. Base is loaded basically every time. Runners in scoring position. She's had to make some key blocks like that. And she has. The 1-1. Away, 2-1. The 2-1 pitch. Oh, good pitch from Lugo, and it's even a 2-2. Two two. And that's that changeup. That's what she's trying to do with that changeup every single time. It's just not as consistent as she would love to have it. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Got her. She gets Fryer on the strikeout. And the Gators now it out away from a win here in Orlando. And when Lugo's able to get ahead and just pull the string on this changeup, she can be unhittable. Now Volpe is the scheduled hitter, but she's going to get called back. As Coach Beaumont, I told you, I had a feeling she was going to go to the bench. She's going to call another freshman's number. Savannah Adams will come to the plate, who made the American Conference honor roll this week. Had a big two RBI tying hit against Texas last Saturday in Clearwater. As well as a big two RBI go ahead RBI against Texas Tech in Clearwater on Friday night. Has power to all fields and she will pinch hit here for Volpe. So Baumelon going for more power here over the slap hitter Volpe. Yeah, I mean, she got the start too against Ole Miss in the game on Friday. Had a couple of strikeouts, but just like you said, she is someone that when she swings, she's looking for the gaps. And Florida, it's right now making sure their defense is all set up. Again, Shannon Doherty right there. She's at second base. She's the tying run. With Adams to face Lugo. So Florida. And UCF here is... Adams pinch hitting for Volpe here with two outs. Runner at second, a 12-11 game. Both teams making adjustments here. It's a game of chess right now. I know you see Florida's bringing in defensive specialist Mia Bufano in right field. And she's someone who is known for her defense. She's owned that role of being the defensive specialist for the Florida. Yeah, Coach Walton told me he's never had a player like Bufano who's embraced that role. And that's what you need, right, as a team. You need everyone to understand what their role is, whether it's defensive specialist, the starting pitcher, leadoff batter. But when you have everyone who understands their role and accepts it, it's a pretty good team. So both teams have made their moves. And now it's Adams and Lugo with the game on the line. First pitch high, ball one. One and oh, the count to Adams. If Adams were to extend the inning, Justine Molina would hit. She's on deck. But the game right now is at the plate. And that's outside 2-0. Two balls and no strikes to count to Adams. As Lugo delivers up high 3-0. 
Now they have an open base at first here. So do you just walk Adams here? I mean, no, I think you go right at her. And I think that this is just sometimes Lugo gets herself in a little bit of trouble of not holding on to that change up a little bit too much. As you've seen, those three balls that she missed were high. 3-0. Low ball four, a four pitch walk to Adams. Two on, two outs. Here in the seventh is now the game winning run is on, the ba on base. And it'll be Molina who has a hit tonight back in the second inning, drove in a run, will hit. Now, Ball Malone is going to go. It's her turn to go to the bench. She will pinch run for Adams and will re enter Volpe. Re entering into the game, number 23, Elise Volpe. And so Molina, who also played, of course, recruited by Coach Ball Malone, played at Boise State, came over to UCF to reunite with Coach Ball Malone a couple years ago, now steps in here. She was in that regional final in Gainesville in 2019 against Florida as a member of Boise State. And now she steps in here with two on, two out against Lugo. And the first pitch from Lugo is a strike. What's the approach here if you're Molina? I mean, you know you're going to see some change-ups, especially now that you have one strike against you. So you try to shorten up, attack, and get it in the green. The 0-1. Swing and a miss off speed, and Lugo ahead 0-2. And, the 0-2 pitch from Lugo. Got her. They will complete the strikeout of throw to first, and the Florida Gators. Come away with a 12 to 11 victory over the UCF Knights here at the Knights Classic here in Orlando tonight. What a game and what a wild game that the Gators come out on top, but these two teams left it all in the field. I was gonna say a wild game is definitely the best way to describe it. 12 to 11, you had 12 hits for the Knights, or for the Gators, 15 for the Knights. And it really just came down to who was gonna come up with runners in scoring position because every single inning there was an opportunity, but Florida able to best the Knights. A uh, back and forth affair as Florida comes from behind and wins it 12 to 11 in the highest score Scoring UCF Florida game of all time here tonight. But uh, the Knights will try to put this behind them. They'll play Oakland tomorrow night while Florida will go back home. They go undefeated here in the Knights Classic. And another memorable night here in Orlando and another memorable matchup between these two teams. So Florida wins it 12 to 11 for Francesca Anea, for Jade Barquette.